Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and pan gender other kin. It's the Richard Lewis Show. I'm your host, Richard Lewis, and finally, the Wanderer has returned. Sam Davis, now officially a commentator. <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, is back. Is back from first. He was in Asia. The man got soul. <laughs> Strongest man in soul, mate. Bro- broke the box, world record, and arcade machine. I gathered a crowd oh, when I broke did. out, mate. Oh, God. I swear to God, did you not see the picture up on the Twitter? All those boxing arcade oh, machines. I fully yeah. slumped when I broke the record, and I literally had a crowd of Koreans going, Aah! It was huge. Is there a video of that? Nah, there's not. Actually, there might. Nah, there isn't. There's video of me hitting it, but not when I broke the record. All right. Okay, well, um, people are saying the sync slightly out, so yeah, I'll let yeah, you just do your press the buttons right. on the fly. Uh, so anyway, dude, um, well, let's let's talk about your adventures, man. Like, uh, you know, I haven't got any plans for the show, uh, really. That's like, Mar- yeah, no, I mean, Maria, uh, you, you know, Maria, obviously, she's um, she's ha- literally having surgery at the moment, so I'm I, I'm doing the show to take my mind off that. So I, if I get a phone call, I'm just gonna go, um. So, I just but yeah. the, the audio, so maybe frozen for a sec. So everyone's going to be freaking yeah. out and chat. Yeah, I get it. Um, so let's uh, so let's do it, dude. Let's talk about uh, career. Well, I mean, first of all, um, like how the fuck? How, how did? Why did? How did they come to you? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know like, either, mate. So you know? Min Sick came to me, which obviously I used to work with him at IMG, and we're just good friends in general. Yeah. I think he just came down to, he, he knew I'd be a laugh to be two weeks with, I guess. I think he's like, you know what, Sam Sam can eat some food and drink some beer. Let's do that. Yeah. And he asked me, and I just went, you know, I like money, mate. So I said, yay. <laughs> do like money. That is true. Uh, but you've never, I mean, have you done any, like, casting or commentary or anything no, like that I before? I did, like, one drunk, when I went to IE series, I was, like, drunk on stream with a few boys just like talking over the game but not actually casting you know what i mean just being wrecked on stream that was pretty much and that, uh, that cheers was for the cheers for the 23 months lucky ft always uh good to get a resub uh so so you got to korea you you declared korea's strongest man <laughs> well strongest man in seoul okay so what were you doing out there why were you why were you punching machines i thought they just love I think arcades are still big in Korea. Like, there was multiple, multi-story yeah. arcades. And I went mm-hmm. in there, I rinsed some Pokemon. I got, like, five Pokemon from the claw machines. Easy money. And I saw nice. a boxing machine, and obviously I'm just a fucking... Wait, gorilla, how... So how I have to hit it. How are those claw machines easy money? They're all rigged, No, but I think it, these ones aren't. They're not... Well, they are, but they're not as bad. Like, the payouts are lower, I guess. Right. So like, so you, so you came back with five Pokemon. Yeah, five Pokemon and a little dog, and mm. like some other shit, mate. I was rinsing them. I only spent like thirty quid, forty quid. Came back right. with all the dolls and a fucking world championship in my belt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then obviously you go over to Bucharest. You do the European one. You got to see space soldiers come through. Yeah, that was big. It was big, big for them, big for the Turkish CS scene. Yeah, it was a sick game as well, and like. Myth. No one you when I've I've been with you at events obviously loads of times and I see yeah. you going through the comments. And when I'm like on the out, I'm like, Rich, why are you responding to the monks? I, I like they're obviously monks, but mm. when I'm there I'm just like these fucking people need you like go. why are these casters talking? I wanna watch the game. Yeah, so do I you fucking ape. What do you think they're paying me to do? They're paying me to yeah. talk because the game ain't ready. <coughs> see, uh, uh you know, I I've tried telling you, um, you know about about this and like no one really believes it till you sort of go through it yourself but uh people like it's not even trolling because people oh they're just trolling you no they legitimately don't understand how a broadcast works and they assume that there's like this allocated amount of time to talk before we bring you the game and it's not true we we talk in the moments in between in fact the only reason talking between maps exists is because players want a break. Yeah. <laughs> it's not actually even dictated so to by the broadcast. And I have to sit there and fucking flick my hoop, talk for 15 minutes about two teams that have already exhausted all the points I had of them before the fucking game started because they were trying yeah. to get their SSDs working for 25 minutes and someone's headphones weren't working. 
Yeah. And that's the other thing as well. Like, I'll say this a bunch of times. I don't give a fuck. Uh, players, like, are so fucking stupid when it comes to setup. <laughs> like, just legit, dude. Like, I'm, I'm telling it like it is. Like, uh, I do not know how you can be a professional player uh, for as long as these guys have been. And you see them, and they'll be like, my keyboard's not plugged <laughs> yeah. in. You're like, yeah, all right. It were plugged in now. The light's not coming on the way I like. You're like, fucking hell. Like, it's really bad, dude. Um, that players, you know, just don't sort of understand setup and stuff. And we, we've, like, you know, oh, I didn't know I'd have to install the drivers. It's not even shit like that sometimes. Them, like, have you had a player me. legitimately say, the game just doesn't feel right? And the yeah, other's just yeah. going, what the fuck do you want me to do with that, mate? Fucking do a lobotomy on you till it feels normal again. What the fuck do hey, you mean? That's where you pull out the classic Sim Salabim. <laughs> <laughs> just do the fucking spell you know uh so yes yeah, so, uh, no it's good I, I i like it when people go and do casting and stuff because it should give them a perspective that they didn't have before and like the criticisms for the most part are just so unreasonable you also get a healthy loathing for twitch chat oh yeah because it's just like you know if it's not aimed at one of the teams <laughs> or one of the players the next logical course uh, on on you know, if if you travel down Beer Cunt Boulevard, right? <laughs> Eventually, you're gonna end up at, at you guys, and that's when you just see it like, lol, shit, Caster, lol, who is Caster? And then why Caster talking? Like, fuck me, no, it's too <laughs> much, dude. But overall, I'm guessing you had a good time. Yeah, right? it was good, and surprisingly, the feedback was pretty all right. The only complaint I got is when apparently I kept mentioning that Optic should have banned Cash. Which they subsequently yeah. got sixteen three done. I understand they don't play cobble, motherfuckers. But my point is, you have two orbs. You should rather play cobble than cash, which is the only match where soldiers have ever beat a team on SK Gaming. That's it, mate. That's it. I just want to get it off my chest. Yeah, but that's the other thing as well. Like, uh, you're never entitled to an opinion. You you simply aren't. Like, even if it, it doesn't matter how many years you've been watching the game. You don't understand the game. It doesn't matter how long you've been watching teams or how hard you've studied the trends. So basically, ex-pros are allowed to say any old shit. <laughs> like they can say any old shit, and they can be actually demonstrably wrong, and people will support their viewpoint. You can be somebody, you know, like myself. I, you know, I get told all the time, "Ah, I watched you play once, and you weren't very good." Yeah, I'm an old <laughs> man with one eye and a dicky left hand. You know what I mean? Like I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be that good, should I? Um, you know, that's like saying, oh, be, be, you know, a few years ago, fucking hell, I saw Muhammad Ali, he was just shaking. <laughs> I, I, he could never, he doesn't understand boxing, you know what I mean? Like, or say, you know, like, um, Skip Bayless shouldn't talk about boxing. I beat fuck out of him, mate. Yeah, but he can still talk about the sport, can't he? Yeah, so, so you know, you see, you see some nonsense opinions. Uh, but it's fine. But, yeah, you know, I guess you had a good time. You made some cash. Yeah, yeah. Good, good cash, mate. Some good food. <laughs> I had loads of yeah. fucking good shit when I was out there eating duck and filet mignon, foie gras, living high life, mate. Yeah, just think, uh, just think of all the geese that had to suffer. Uh, <laughs> that nice big juicy slab of foie gras. That's what they do. They deliberately uh, overfeed them so their livers become like fatty liver. You know, they get right. liver disease basically. And then they take that rich fatty liver straight from their. Well, it was fucking you know, banging. Like ail it. Yeah, <laughs> ailing body. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? It's like veal. We'll just take a little baby calf, right? Rip rip it from its mother's teeth, stick it in a box so it can never move because we don't want it to build muscles, right? With just a little straw with some milk in to keep it alive. <laughs> it lives like that for 21 days, and then we just kill it, and it's banging. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> It's it absolutely banging. Though, banging. Like it is oh, it banging. is banging. It's a hundred percent banging, but it's evil as well. Like. It's absolute evil, <laughs> but it's absolutely banging. You know, like, what do you? Class what do you do with human it? Human fucking conscience. We are absolute it's evil, cunts, aren't we? but banging. Hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's uh, it's all kinds of fucked up. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, like I said, I didn't really have a lot planned uh, for the show. Uh, and who knows how long it'll go and uh, how when it'll take, uh, you know, when it'll end and stuff. So uh, I've got a few links. What, do want to go over uh, didn't happen. Uh, we, we haven't done a didn't happen for a while, and that's one of the staples of the show, and it's one of the catchphrases, and we've got it on a T-shirt. 
By the way, new T-shirts come in. I talked to Chloe. Uh, a Grow the Fuck Up T-shirt is being designed. Big. So Grow the Fuck Up will we'll be in the store soon. But anyway, look at this. Um, this is an archive that didn't happen. And I don't, I don't know why people do this, Sam. I mean, I do, but, but I just... You're definitely going to get called out on that, right? So, guy called Bill Gross. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he's uh, like, uh, he's the guy behind Idea Lab, which is like a tech incubator. And um, he fucking, he looks like Beecher from yes, Oz, actually. Of course. But, yeah, but whatever. Uh, that's a hell of a reference. Um, but he says, in the I'm getting old department, a kid saw this and said, oh, you 3D printed the save icon. Right. And of course, it's a three and a half, you know, inch floppy disk. Right. But. People, are, it's a recurring joke. So, and somebody wrecked him immediately. <laughs> this this account, still Gary and top reply, right? Also in the I'm getting old department, this anecdote <laughs> dates back to at least May 2014. And he, he has a little picture there. I see a few other folks have already pointed this out in the replies. If this is real, then a kid has an identity I call bullshit. <laughs> and then... Uh, on on a related note, and then he puts a little thing saying, my four-month-old just asked why people make up shit their kids say a virtue signal on social media. To look woke, I said. Cunt, he replied. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful... That is a bagger, isn't it? Like, good old uh, liberal lunacy. Appreciate it. Like, um, So, yeah. But, I mean, I, I just... When are people going to fucking... Grow when are the they fuck just go, up. <laughs> yeah, just grow the fuck up? Just stop it, like. I know, like, oh, fucking... this motherfucker is as well, mate. Haven't you got, oh. sh- haven't you got something on? Haven't you got something to do? It's just the idea that, you know, here's what I'm gonna do. I, I, I like, I, I'm so desperate for attention, despite like, I, I've got 264,000 Twitter followers. Yeah, probably money I'm, I'm in the, the bank. I'm, I got a successful yeah, company. money in the bank. Yeah, just like. Just get on with so it, learn guys. Learn to like, take just... the W, mate. You won. Yeah, like, yeah. You haven't yeah, got to be won. cool on the internet as well. Mm. And obviously he thinks, yeah, you know, I need, I've got to be the complete package. I'll drop this one. The kids will love this. Well, they, they fucking don't love it, mate. You're just talking out your ass with an obvious lie. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just tragic, isn't it? Like, I just, I, I fucking hate people like that. Like, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone has this friend, right? We, the friend that just lies all the time, but like the lies are so obviously lies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like one, like one day I was having a pint and Bruce Lee walked in. Yeah. yeah. You know, we got you know what I mean? fight. He, he just about pushed me off, but I had, I had the chalk all in at one point. Yeah, well, not even that, though, you know. <laughs> it's like I, I, I talk to a lot of people who talk about, like, you know, failing. Uh, oh, and there I was, and I was just about to sign for Arsenal. Oh, yeah. And then in my last game, someone snapped my leg in half, yeah. and now I work in Sainsbury's. You know what <laughs> yeah, it's like? Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, all right, but Yeah, all right. I'll tell you another fucking story, actually, talking about working in Sainsbury's. This, this, this actually is kind of – it's kind of cool, and it's kind of depressing. Right. So you'll you'll appreciate this because it's Port Talbot, right? So I got a call, uh, well, I got a message, I should say, I got like an email from one of my old mates from way back when in in Port Talbot, right. uh, a guy called Martin Reese. He's a fucking legend, like he is an absolute legend. I'll tell you about him in just a second. But he dropped me a line. He said, "Hey, buddy, how's it going? Long time no see. Hope you're well. Can I ask a favor for my friend's son?" who is an avid listener and watcher of your show. Right. Right. No, it's pretty good. But then I started thinking, why aren't you watching my fucking show? Do you know what I mean? And then it's like, it's that slow, the penny slowly dropping. How old is my audience? Would I be allowed near my own audience? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Would I have to have an ankle tag on? So wait, is it, you think it's just this guy once he watches the show and doesn't want to admit it? No, no, no. I'm just saying, Obvi- like when he messaged me and like he, he had a little thumbnail of my of the show, like Richard Lewis show, and I was like, ah, oh, the boys, the boys in Pothole, but are watching the show. Where he said, no, nah, it's it's my friend's son. Like, I, <laughs> I don't watch your shit, mate. I don't watch your shit. Fuck you. Fuck your stuff. My own mates. 
don't even watch me. But their kids do. So anyway, so he, he, he said, uh, get in touch with him. He's called Ben and uh, drop my line. It'll, like, it'll make his life. He'll be over the moon. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to get in touch with him. But I'll tell you about Martin Reese, just so you get uh, an I- idea of the caliber of the man. So Martin Reese, I have literally seen this guy. This is legit. Uh, I think it was over at the Affen Lido, actually. He can plug his ears, right? He can push his ears inside his ears. Right. And he can Not pull bad. his... Because <laughs> he used to have, he used to have uh, I think he had some teeth knocked out. You know, so he used to be able to get his lip over his nose, right? <laughs> and Reese, Ma- good old Marty Reese, as a mass, he had a massive chest. He did a barrel chested cunt to the max, like never seen nothing like it. Like, so he was just all lungs, like he just all. <laughs> right. And I've seen him plug himself in like that. He plugs his ears over the nose and he just sinks to the bottom of a swimming pool like a stone. <laughs> he can sit there for seven minutes, but. <laughs> Like you don't even need oxygen or nothing. I've never, no. never seen any like it. And when I first met him at university, he, um, he had, he used to get wrecked, and he had, he just had a riddle for every occasion. Right. Like, like he was a hobbit or something, you know? Like, like some sort of NPC he, giving you quests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Answer me these riddles three, and he would like, <laughs> he would be, you know, my my first is in dog. But never in cats. Like he's all this mad shit, you know what I mean? He was just no. he had like just millions of them. Like it was he was he's a wild motherfucker. Like he was he was wild as fuck. So but he's um he's not an editor anymore. He's gone through that you know, maturing phase. <laughs> he's gone through that phase where you stop eating troops every night and grow the fuck up. As he has grown the fuck up, and that's why when he got in touch, I was like, "Oh, Mark, gotta get you have to come on the show, like just tell some stories about the good old days." And it was like, "Nah, can you just?" You talk to my friend's son. <laughs> but I'll see you in ten years, but you know, mm. I'm happy for him though. I'm happy for him. He's fucking. He's he's a he's a fucking ledge, mate. So anyway, right. So here's another didn't happen. Just throw this out here because uh, we do we we love one of these as well. The old fake hate crimes, Sam. The old fake hate crimes. Which one is it now, mate? Well, what's he done this time? Eh? What's Mr. Fake Hate Crime done today? So this is over in the New York Post. And it's just like, when is this going to stop? Like, when are people going to stop doing this? Because I'm fucking bored of it now. I'm bored of talking about it. But it's over in Manhattan. You know Manhattan? Yeah. Where everyone's freaking out because they're like, oh, there's bloody swastikas everywhere. There's racial abuse everywhere. This is the rise of Trump. You know, and all of this. And it's not, it's just people doing it to themselves. Like, <laughs> so they can act outraged. It's like, so this was, um, oh, to be fair, this, this is Kansas, Manhattan, Kansas, I should say. So the other Manhattan, not the good Manhattan, <laughs> the Kansas Manhattan. Fair enough. Um, but he, he did like, he, he, took his, he took his car and he spray painted stuff on it that said, go home, Riley date County your own kind, it. and just die right and people took pictures of it and started saying like blah these bloody kkk on the rise again and all that and the fella had to come out and admit that he actually i did it um and anyway he said when asked he sort of said it was like a halloween prank kind of gone on himself yeah that's a good one yeah got him right um, but yeah, just completely ridiculous. Uh, and the police department obviously had to fucking, you know, come out and be like, look, <laughs> once again, there are no KKK spray painting cars in the area. Um, and then get, here's the best part though. Even though he wasted police time and told a lie and all of that, right? They've decided they're not going to charge him for filing a false police report. Why you? Why though? Indeed. Mm. Why? Because you know that's fine. And even though the, the the loads of people got super upset and agitated about the fucking you know photographs and all that, 
and and yeah, I mean, you've you've caused all those problems in your local neighborhood and everything else. Nah, it's fine. They said that the guy who did it is genuinely remorseful and has expressed sincere regret. That doesn't help in law, though. Well, it does. It might reduce the sentence, but it doesn't get you off. Well, definitely got this fella off. So I just like, uh, you know, I'm just fucking tired of it, mate. The classic didn't happen. It's like, just fucking stop. Just fucking stop doing it. Like, you know what I mean? What, what? Your empty fucking shit lives. Like, how shit does your life have to be if you're going to invent being the victim of a racist incident <laughs> to brighten it? What is going on? Like, that's just fucked up. That's not even the most depressing or tedious thing I've seen uh, by any fucking stretch, by the way. Uh, you know, we talked about how the Rick and Morty fan base is getting out of fucking yeah. control. Ruining it. All right, well, this, I'm glad that uh, they got linked to this a while ago. You just haven't been around to do a show. But um, did you did you see these fucking, these got to be the most non-sexually, well, no, okay, they're not the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> but these are, this would just be like hitting my erection with a cold spoon. These are Rick and Morty Pickle Rick condoms. And uh, unfortunately, the Kickstarter failed. Good. Uh, they raised five hundred and fifty dollars out, out of five thousand, and you can see the concept there, helpfully illustrated with a fucking banana. Why is it not a pickle? You fucking marketing shit lords. Come on. <laughs> no wonder uh, they only if, got five hundred fifty, mate. If you put that over a pickle, you would have been at least two grand deep. Well. Yeah, so I've they, got they, an idea for Kickstarter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you, right? When I used to go out with a rugby team, uh, way back when. I mean, have you ever seen these novelty condoms yeah. they have? Like, you know, when you go to like shithole bars, like the Four uh, Four Winds. Um, you know, in the men's toilets, like you get like so you get like a few things. Yeah, you get like, the, it, it you always get the ribbed one, mate. Usually now yeah. they're just putting cock rings in them. I don't know, like when that just yeah, became mate. reasonable. You could big, just buy a cock ring in a fucking you know. cock ring. I know, man. just vibrating Who's cock this rings. Who's just walking in? Goes, you know what? I got five quid spare. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. I'll pick up this multi-layered cock ring. But last time I was in the four winds, like. Uh, I, I saw a guy washing his cock and balls in the sink. <laughs> he was like, he was just looking at me like, just got lucky, haven't I, bud? Oh, man, it's a go home. Like, <laughs> what are you doing here? Start, just put put some music on while you have a shower, maybe. But now he was just washing his knob in the fucking, to- in, the, in the sink, in the fucking, in the four winds toilet. But yeah, anyway, so that's not the fucking point, like. Uh, the point is that um, I, this is absolutely true. You might be able to Google these. I swear I haven't Googled this before I tell you <laughs> if there is a picture. But, right, so when I was on rugby tour, we went into this boozer. And, uh, you know, we used to do this thing called Team Steam. Team Steam was like you had to go get the porn mags and other assorted sexual paraphernalia for the for the team. And, you know, you it, it was meant to be embarrassing. You gave it to the first year uh, rugby, you know, the, all the new players basically as a form of hazing. They had to go in team steam get the pawn and 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 the the people on the board like the captain like me and all that we'd dictate what our tastes were so you know we'd say stuff like we want oh, 60 plus <laughs> and they've got to win and buy a 60 plus pawn mag and you know they're like oh, oh yeah said this please you know and like we're, we're all on the tour bus like yeah right you know so it's really fucking juvenile but anyway the other thing we used to do was like get all these fucking like you know like I say, assorted sexual paraphernalia. And uh, we come across this fucking condom. It's outrageous. And it was called the Luminous Rat. Fucking hell. Don't get this, though. Man, so it's a good. It exists, like. No, it was so. We took it out of the pack just to have a look at what they look like. And it stands up by itself yeah, I've got for it. starters. Is this it? Right? And it's just got a rat's head where <laughs> your where your bell end goes, and it glows in the dark. Not bad. <laughs> who, who the fuck would want that? Yeah, like, I can't even who... find a picture of that on the internet. Like, let me out. Ah, mate, this I is can't. fucking. Like, I, can find, I can already find the stand up. It's like one. seventeen. It is no sixteen. Se- yeah, sixteen, seventeen years ago. Uh, let me, oh, hang on, luminous rat condom. Yeah, yeah that's what? what I mean. It got recommended on Google. Yeah, it came it's... up, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's an autocomplete. <laughs> so people are out there. For, yeah. yeah, people are out there desperately trying to find the luminous rat condom. Like, yeah, it's just 
It just doesn't exist. There was a time before the internet. These things were fucking outrageous, mate. You just wouldn't. Like, if you'd fucking said, you know, said to a, 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 a you know, your prospective sexual partner, I'm just going to go put the Johnny on, like, be oh, right back. Oh, mate, I found other ones, though. Yeah. <laughs> you could, if you just Google novelty condoms, you can get it. You can get an alligator, man. You can get it all. Why would little, oh, little the... Pikachu condom, man? How can you fire into Pikachu for fuck's sake? <laughs> Who's jetting into Pikachu? What is this though? What is going on here, but look at this, like. What is fucking midget man tuggy? What is that? <laughs> Look at that. What is that? What is that? Why are you talking <laughs> in advertising a condom? Like, I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> That's unreal. That is midget man. But look, it looks like the Omega lol picture, like reversed, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, like, what the fuck, man? So anyway, yeah, the luminous rat, like the luminous rat. Right. Mm. Hey, anyway, sorry, we'll move on. We'll, we'll just we'll, look at you, look at a fucking novelty <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> who wants a mushroom on the tip of their penis? <laughs> now and then. Yeah, who wants? Who wants a mushroom on the tip of their penis? But no, I've been trying to avoid that my whole life, you know. <laughs> um. Right. Anyway. Growing right. So. Fun guy. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, I hate to drop it on people, right? But uh, we're probably going to talk about Donald Trump at some point on the show because, as always, there's lots of ridiculous Trump related stuff going on. Um, I'm trying to think because, like, I, I want to because I haven't planned the show this time and we're kind of like laughing and, and ha 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 ha. But, like, I, there was some serious shit I wanted to talk about as well. Like, just, just, there is a bonkers story, but I'm, I'm trying to find a way to just segue. Uh, in wit. Um, so let me just see. Uh, okay, well, did you see what happened with Papa John's? What, where he had to come out and like make, mm -hmm. say no racist or allow tweet his pizza or something? I saw a bit of it. Yeah. So, right, okay. So basically, I've never really liked John uh, <laughs> from. from... <laughs> if you're on first to basis, me and John um, never got along when we yeah, were young. You know no, but, like, a lot of people might remember. That there's no point in trying to hide about this now, like, just because, you know, uh, I, the work I do and stuff. Uh, but uh, but uh, back in, like, I don't know when it was. When when was fucking Pizza GG? Oh, not, not to be confused with Pizzagate. Yeah. No, I think it was 2012. Was it? Not well, the EG be... thing? Feels like yeah. Awesome. It might have been, though. Nah, I think 2012. There you go. Like, split the difference. So, um, yeah. May 2013. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I fucking wrote about that. And like I said, you know, they're not a great sponsor in terms of some of the things that they've been associated with. Like, he, you know, it's Papa John. He said some outrageous shit. Like, he basically strong. You know, he talked about, oh, well, if I've got to pay Obamacare, um, I don't want to fucking have to do that. So maybe I'll just have to start laying people off if Obama gets in again. It's like, I, I don't like it when corporations pretty much instruct their employees like the way they're going to need to vote if they want to yeah. keep their jobs. So kind of, that's a little bit shady and unethical. Um, anyway, I mean, that was a long time ago. So I'm just putting that out there. So, uh, and it wasn't Papa John's fault that all these esports organizations didn't keep any of the promises, by the way. That was definitely wasn't like, like John just picked up the phone like, <laughs> that's right. Papa John's pictures, nerds. <laughs> yeah. Well, We'll never see in control in a dress. <laughs> you know, like, whatever. Right? So, um, <clears throat> so that's fine and dandy. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I, if I can, I, I, this is just ridiculous. I like, I kind of feel a bit sorry for him here and no one's asking the right question. Um, and that is like, how does this process keep working? So you've got, the the a bunch of white supremacists like you know the Daily Stormer right so you know the Daily Stormer and it's run by that fucking piece of shit uh, Aglin or whatever the fuck his name is and they've had to move around uh, you know all their websites and stuff because they're all the web hosting like keeps shutting them down and they have to find a country that where they're going to be immune to that 
so what they do is like periodically they'll just come out and they'll just say hey i support this i i support this thing and there, and then all the fucking bl- i mean i can't even call these journalists anymore it is just the fucking blogosphere even though it's credible websites and publications and papers and everything doing this they come out and they go, oh, my God, the Daily Stormer says it likes this thing. And it's like, yeah, you know, like I don't know what to tell what else to tell you that Nazis are people, you know, they're cunts, but they're people and people have preferences. And actually what they're doing isn't even about expressing those preferences. It's just trolling. They're just trolling you. The reason they came out in support of Papa John's pizza is that John said, ah, pizza sales are down, and it's because of these NFL protests. No one's tuning in to watch the game, (laughs) so no one's ordering a pizza. Fucking hell. Right, now... That's some trickle-down economic shit right there. Yeah, right, you know, I don't don't necessarily agree with what he's saying, right? As I said, I don't think the guy is the most astute politically. But, you know... So uh, he said that, and then the Daily Stormer came out and went, "Fucking hell, we love Papa John's now." And (laughs) that's all it takes. Yeah. So to show support for uh, Papa John's, right? They they came out and they they did this. Um, They they put like a picture of a pepperoni swastika. Right here it is. (laughs) Mentally fucking hell. Yeah. Full, full mentally ill. Um, there's also uh, uh, somebody made a meme of. I mean, this is how extreme it gets on both sides. I, I, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm right. You, there's nowhere to hide politically anymore. By the way, right? Because you can be anti-racist, uh, obviously, like which is the sensible stance. Like you can loathe Nazis as, as much as the next person, uh, but equally as well, like you can find the left absurd. You can find the right absurd, and then you go, oh, well, I must be a centrist. And then you're like, nope, they've turned the word centrist into a thing. And, and you know, look, I don't think the guy who runs Papa John's is a fucking white supremacist or whatever because he said he didn't like the NFL protest. I think he's an idiot. I don't think, you know, but people read into it. So you ended up with this as well on the opposite side, which was someone in a KK outfit doing a Nazi salute saying uh, P- Papa John's whiter ingredients – whiter pizza so you know both sides just acting like complete retards uh, as is par for the course in this political landscape but because the daily stormer came out and said this everybody is now coming out and uh, as if papa john's had done something wrong like you cannot help who endorses your products like you just can't you know, they also came out and said Wendy's was their official burger. The official burger of the Daily Stormer. You don't do anything about it. Like, you're, you, if you're Wendy's or you're Papa John's, I'm sure you find their politics absolutely reprehensible. But they just come out and go, yeah, we love you. So, so what do you do? Guess my burger's just, fucking evil now because you eat it. Yeah, well, it turns out you're absolutely on point. The burger is evil. The burger was evil, Sam. And... <laughs> We ended up in this absurd situation where d- fucking he, he has to, pa- Papa John's has to come out and says, "Please don't eat my pizzas, Nazis." <laughs> Can't we just all agree that the people are scum? Can't we just come to that agreement instead of blaming the food they eat? They also drink water. Are we all fucking foregoing so, water now? This is this is legit. So lick, lick, lick I'll, I'll I'll just. This is the this is the same um, this is the same publication. This is Newsweek, so this is their follow up to it. Like, imagine, imagine because a bunch of fucking assholes you've never fucking met, you're not politically affiliated with, you've got no business ties, you don't know them individually, you've never expressed anything politically that's even vaguely in line with what a Nazi thinks. And they, they can now just uh, – this is what I mean. Like when I talk about the hysterical left basically empowering uh, the radical racist right, they now can shut down any bu- – they can harm any business they choose, any business they choose 
eventually the penny will You're giving drop. them power, literally. You're giving yeah. them the power to completely nullify an entire brand. Eventually, the penny will drop, and they will stop doing it to companies that they actually wish to endorse, and they will start endorsing companies they wish to hurt. That's the next great, you know, white supremacist troll movement you're going to see. They're going to attack companies that they actually want to hurt because this this wasn't just Newsweek that picked up this story. This was all over the place. This was pretty much all of the mainstream press wrote something about how Nazis endorse Papa John's now. And now, uh, Mr. fucking Papa John's, John Schnatter, Papa. has to come out. Yeah, p- Papa to his friends. <laughs> he, he's had to come out and say, p- please don't eat my pizza, racist. Please. Please don't eat them if you're racist. Like, what world is it? Like, what? Do you know what I mean? Can people see how ridiculous this all is? And... Uh, it's just, it's just mad. It's just, uh, like, uh, it, it just, it is so bonkers to me that this is even a thing. Like, this is a story. Um, like, and and I've got genuine sympathy for any company, even ones I've criticized in the past, because nobody should have to come out and say, we make pizza, we're not part of the, of the white supremacist movement. The dying, dwindling, pathetic, not growing by any metric white supremacist movement. The only way the white supremacist movement is is growing in America is because now anybody is one if you don't agree with a very particular narrow field of politics. Right, that's it. That's the only w- metric by which it's growing. Everybody else says it's down. You know, interracial marriages are up. Uh, every you know, uh, 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 opportunities are up for uh, non-white people, minorities in America. Every other metric points to the fact that racism is being eroded and pushed to where it belongs, which is off the face of the earth. You got a couple of fucking you know diehard fucking lunatics that just are basically concern trolling at this point. Say hey, 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 we fully support Papa John's, hey, hey, hey. and everyone's just like, well, can never buy Papa John's again. <laughs> Papa John, what have I done? What's what have I done? Uh, it's it's madness, mate. Papa's just making uh, the dough. He's not doing yeah. nothing else. It's so crazy. So you you got that. Um, and 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 I, again, it, it's just like I say, it, it's just these absurdist headlines, you know. Like you, you think to yourself, this can't be real, but it, but this is the world we live in now. Like you ever notice, right? Like, isn't it weird how the mainstream media tell everybody that the white supremacist movement is growing? Right? It's growing. Yeah, it's complete. Uh, that they're everywhere. They're under your bed. They've infiltrated your workplace. They're in your favorite magazines. They play your favorite games. They make your favorite games. They make your favorite pizza. Yeah, isn't it weird how whenever the press has to quote a white supremacist, there's only three places they go to. Richard Spencer, a a known cunt, an idiot. The Daily Stormer, a known trolling website ran by a fucking little manlet prick. And they'll occasionally, very occasionally, when they're stuck, they'll just find some old, fat, 56-year-old KKK. Confederate flag shooting Yeah, guns. yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? The South will rise again! <laughs> yeah. And there you three... Well, if there's so many of them, wh- where, why haven't you... Wait, do you remember when, like, the KKK was actually huge and they had all these fucking dragons and shit holding conferences across the country, going on TV? I think it was in the 1920s or whatever it was, <laughs> like, where they where they legitimately had hundreds of thousands of members. Now, like, according to... Um, according to, like, official crime statistics, p- like, paid up, card-carrying members of the KKK are, like, 400 now. <laughs> Like in every state, paid up. Yeah, you know, yeah, paid up. Members. Remember to pay like, you fucking membership fee, boys. We run out of bullets. We've only got thirteen but, bullets left. And 
we, we, we've got to stop this guilt by association nonsense. Now, here's the problem with this. This is why the mainstream press obviously can't. Like, you're not going to see anybody writing an opinion piece saying, well, so what if the Daily Stormer endorses... Um, hang on a minute. I, I'm just going to fuck with my mixer. I keep noticing it goes orange. There you go. That should do it. Make it a little bit smoother. Um, you, you, won't, you won't read an opinion piece by anybody saying... Um, so what if the Daily Stormer endorses Papa John's? Because if they do that, then by extension, so what if the Daily Stormer endorses Trump? So what if the KKK, in you know David Duke endorses Trump? And one of the main, you know, one of the big pieces of evidence that Donald Trump is obviously a white supremacist, which he isn't, and I've still never seen any compelling evidence to suggest he is. He's a prick. <laughs> He's he's a belligerent prick, you know. It's just like he's not statesmanlike. He's a lot of things. Show me the evidence, please. But you know, if if you if you follow the logic to its extension, then obviously it erodes that evidence. That oh, David Duke endorsed him. Yeah, he disavowed him thirty times. You know, and of course, saying this makes you a Trump supporter, and this is why we live in the landscape that we do. I bet uh, you voted er for Trump, Richard. Yes, I bet. I bet I did. <laughs> So, so it's completely, you know, just that, that, that's the, that's the world we live in right now. Nazis say they like something person has to come out and disavow you. you, you you're a fucking Pete. It's pizza. How are we politicizing pizza? How are we doing that in this day and age? It's like someone's really, this is what I mean. Like I there's, there's, there's so many deep state operation by the vegans, man. <laughs> They're trying yeah. to get to the pizza. I don't even. Uh, I don't even know um, what is fucking like. Like how how we're gonna combat this problem? Because like I haven't talked about this like uh, uh, quite so much as I probably should have. Like a lot of people have said, "Hey, Richard, you're biased. Um, you're clearly conservative. You're clearly uh, a right winger. You're probably even alt right, <laughs> and you cloak yourself in this reasonable veneer." Okay, so let's talk about that, right? Now, there was a very specific time period where it, the, the, the the culture war um, was going down a path that I certainly didn't want it to, to go down, and that was like, you know, people are being censored at universities, uh, you had to have a particular viewpoint about things like immigration, if you, for example, if you were for more, if you were for like stronger border control, even that, which to me is very mild, like on the spectrum of opinions about immigration, uh, with open borders being over here and closed borders being over here, further checks is about here. I mean, it's not that far up, but that makes you a racist now. So I, I observed a lot of things that were going on. I observed, you know, the whole way Gamergate was covered was a big thing for me because I've worked in the games industry. And I know that there is collusion and corruption. And I know that reviews are done on a quid pro quo basis. I've experienced it myself. So I, I watched the way it was covered. And, and it was like, oh, it's a harassment movement. And basically what they did, these games publications that started inserting their politics into everything from about 2013, 2014 onwards, what they did was they took a lunatic fringe. They took a small minority of people who were assholes. I'm not saying nobody got harassed like by people who identified as gamer gators. That would be an absurd viewpoint, right? But they took the few people that did it. And when I say few, understand it is a few. Because if the FBI looked into it and said there's no credible threats, then this is what we're this is what obviously it, what there weren't any credible threats. This wasn't a movement. This was a loose group of people that found solace in a hashtag to express their frustrations about something they didn't like. Now, yes, some people did get harassed, but a lot of it was massively overplayed. The fundamental problem was you went against journalists. And what do you think journalists are going to do if you go against journalists? I mean, again, we've seen it. Trump calls people out and says they're fake news. All the press circle the wagons. Yeah, democracy dies in darkness. They circle the wagons and they say we're not fake news. This is why a lot of people think Gamergate led to Trump. Because they're parallels. There's no follow through. If you believe that, you're mentally ill. But there's parallels. 
And sometimes people get confused when they see patterns and things. Um, and this is just quite simple, that a bunch of people were unhappy with the media, so they criticized the media. So the media responded in the only way they can, which was by attacking them and making out the attacks on the media to actually be something far more sinister than they were. Now, I saw all of this, and I went, fuck that noise. Like, I don't want to be on the side that does that. I don't want to be on the side that believes in censorship i don't want to be on the side like the daily dot was that writes one part of a long convoluted story like tim hunt so the tim hunt thing tim hunt was a professor uh, a, a very illustrious uh, you know kind of scientist and lecturer and he went to south korea and he did a talk about women in science and this is somebody who's mentored multiple women like set up scholarships uh, you know, taught women and he made a joke basically saying oh women in in science yes they cry they do this you fall in love with them and blah blah, blah. and then he said and obviously the solution to this problem is to get rid of dinosaurs like me who think that way that was the point of the joke right and people laughed Okay, three feminist journalists conspired and colluded to pretend that he had said something sexist. They acted outraged. They they wrote it up. And then when a recording came out proving that they'd lied, that it had been taken in good humor, that there was no outrage, that provided critical context to what he said, they, nobody covered that part of it except the Times. That's Murdoch-owned media telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. That's how dark it gets sometimes when people want to spin a narrative. And for years we've been told, like, oh, the right are the only ones that spin a narrative. Like, ha-ha, Fox News, ha-ha, Murdoch, ha-ha, Breitbart. The reality is now both sides are doing it. It's just which way they want to spin things. There isn't a middle ground anymore. There is no like accurate, like entirely accurate reporting. Everybody will spin a narrative now and then, and then occasionally they'll have a good story. So I was at the Daily Dot, right, when that story came out. And I went, I remember talking to the editor and saying, oh, great news, a recording's come out. I got it. It's behind the Times paywall. I've got this. Um, uh, I've, I've I've got this recording, and it proves conclusively that the journalist who accused him of sexism and has hounded him and ruined his career because he lost his job, he you know, put pressure on his marriage. It's all good now. He moved out to Japan. He's living like a king. But I said it. Pro it, it proves she lied. And the editor said to me, "Yeah, we don't need to cover that part of the story." And I went, well, what, why not? Though. Yeah, they'd covered, they they'd covered the initial part of the story extensively, but they didn't cover the conclusion, which was the journalist was proven to be a liar. And understand that she's not just a journalist; she is a journalist who has a lecturing job, lecturing other journalists about journalistic methods and ethics, which she breached. Because she put something that was a provable lie in print to serve her own outrage agenda. So I saw that and I said, you know what? How can I stay at a publication that's going to do that? And, but I needed a job. I had to pay the bills. I knew, I knew of Milo. That's how I end up at Breitbart, right? Now, people can say, oh, well, you went from one extreme to the other. Maybe that's true. But. The reality was there was a lot going on on the left that I that I didn't like. There was lots of stories that mattered to me. I saw a lot of lies. I saw the media change and become something that was weaponized against people, the vast majority of whom weren't doing anything bad. And critically, gamers. And again, I've seen people, um, you know, fan bases for mentally ill people that lie about others for a living. I've seen these people go, oh, but you don't understand. They came after video games <laughs> as if that's a bad thing. My entire life has been about video games. I've worked writing about video games prior to being involved in esports. I've been a gamer my whole life since the first home computers, and I have done lots of things. You know, pretty much all of my friends in some form or another are gamers. I don't necessarily consider that a shameful statement. And I was published in The Independent, or quoted in The Independent, rather, when the BBC ran a documentary saying gaming addiction was real, something that was recently, a study has recently 
proven not to be true, by the way. You can read uh, a synopsis of that study in New Scientist if you Google it. Gaming addiction isn't a real condition, according to these latest findings. And they used all these extreme examples. They used, oh, uh, parents go to a PC bang and they let their kids starve to death uh, because they're playing games 20 hours a day. And it's like, okay, is that gaming addiction? Let's look at it. Oh, these people were seriously mentally ill to the point of being handicapped and were already known to social services. So it's a huge collective failing. They probably shouldn't have been left to look after a kid in the first place. Games was just like, it, it wasn't, it was like a, 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 it was symptomatic of a much bigger problem, you know? But they didn't put that in the BBC documentary. So I, I, I have actively defended this. It's one of the reasons I do not talk to the BBC when they ask me for interviews. I widely reject talking to the BBC. I won't do it. I won't do it. I don't like the fact that they charge people a license fee, which is a completely anachronistic thing in digital in a digital media landscape, especially when uh, you don't get anything for it and they overpay all their stars. And let's be real, how many of them were fucking kids all through the 80s? I, I don't want my money going there. Thank you very much. Um, so, I, I, so I don't like the BBC. I do not like them. Um, but mainly, it was over the, what started my dislike for the BBC pre-Savile was what they did to gamers. So, yeah, I don't mind it. I actually will say, yes, I do support gamers. They're one of the most demonized groups of people that I've seen throughout growing up, you know? Once we got bored of saying people who play Dungeons & Dragons are all fucking Satanists, once we got bored of that, right, then it was video games, and it's always been video games, and it was video games encourage violence. You know, once we got past video nasties, you know, video games do this, video games do that. And even now I saw a clip of Joe Rogan talking to someone, talking about this shooting in the Texas church, They're trying to link it to video games. There's no scientific evidence that links real-life violence to video game violence. There's no scientific evidence that proves that gaming addiction is a thing. There's nothing that suggests gaming is bad. All right? If, if there was, it would be rammed down all of our throats. And yet I've got to hear about how gamers bad people harass people no 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 i'm t so i was tired of that so i was tired of that so when you put all that together obviously i wanted to align myself with the people that were pushing back against that unfortunately you've got just as many retards on this side as you got on that side and it's becoming really apparent now. I'm going to tell you about uh, a couple that, that stood out to me uh, recently. Did you see this shit with Laura Luma? Oh, that fucking waiting for an Uber bullshit. Yeah. Mentally ill. Right. Uh, right. So Laura fucking Luma, by the way. You might remember her. She's been on the show before. This is the yeah, person the who claims someone slashed her tires. Yep. And instead, what it was, her tires had just rotted away because she probably takes Which Ubers she was everywhere. Told yeah. By the mechanic. Which, yeah. W w this is in a previous podcast if you want to go and, uh, and find it. And she, I, I mean, again, I, I like. I, I tweeted this out because I couldn't believe it. So there was a, another is, a radical Islamic incident. Um,. You know, in in New York, somebody got in the car, fucking drove into people, or, you know, killed eight people. It's shocking, right? Like we all we all fucking hate it. We all fucking hate it uh, that it happens, and we're doing everything we can to try and stop it. And I'm I sit on the side of things where it's like, yeah, I think we do need to take maybe um, more precautions. Um, but anyway, uh, so she came out and tweeted that she was late for a press conference, okay, because she refused to get an Uber if she suspected the driver was Muslim. <laughs> right? So, again, just, just let this sink in, all right? Let it sink in. Let it permeate in your brain. This is the tweet, Sam. You can bring it up. Word for word, I'm late to the NYPD press conference because I couldn't find a non-Muslim cab or Uber Lyft driver for over 30 minutes. This is insanity. What, yeah, so the, this if, is insanity. <laughs> she's right there, yeah. Um, so 
understand there's a lot there's a lot wrong with this um uh, you know but but most of all so she, she first of all she's implying she can tell the religion of someone based on the name right so that that that's fine and then second of all um she is saying that if she gets into a car with an islamic uber driver the Uber driver has a significantly higher chance of just deciding to fucking drive into a group of people to kill them. The madness of that, the 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 disgusting, prejudicial sentiment of that, and to tweet this publicly while people are still burying the fucking dead and coming to terms with a problem that has no easy answer, right? To go on social media and to tweet something like this is absolutely fucking outrageous. Now... She got banned from uh, Uber and Lyft services uh, off the basis of that. So that's kind of hilarious, right? Um, you, you'll never have to worry about that problem again. <laughs> um, but she's just an all-round piece of shit. And this is what I mean. Like, there's, there's this attitude on this group of right people, the people that attack the SJWs, right? There's this attitude that you've all got to stick together. And if you're like one of us, like let's say you're a fan of Paul Joseph Watson, you've got to be a fan of Laura Luma too because they present a United front. And the, and it's like, no, I, I, I don't want to sign up for that either. That's ridiculous. These people have got to be called out as much as, as well. And it, like, I, I probably haven't said enough about, the, you know, these people because I, I think the inherent absurdity of the left is low-hanging fruit and it generally makes for funnier things because watching a frothing hysterical leftist get triggered over a Halloween costume is infinitely less troubling if you think about it on a meta level than somebody on the right saying, Uber drivers, if they're, if they're Muslim, are going to kill everybody. You know, there's, that, that's a much more... It's harder to mine that for humor, yeah. is what I'm saying. And it, it, this show is meant to be, ostensibly, it's meant to be funny. It's also meant to make you think, <laughs> right? But, yeah, it's... So, Laura Loomer is, is like one of these names on the right that somehow has got a career r just riding this wave of, like, hate and bullshit and stupidity and no one ever says anything about it like no one ever calls her out and and because the right don't want to eat their own because that's what we accuse i say we that's what they accuse the left of doing like i say this this person doesn't represent me or anything to do with me i think laura loom is an absolute fucking ass clown like i uh I, you know she's just a fucking piece of shit um so you've got you've got Laura Loomer. Interestingly enough, by the way, there were some videos of uh, Laura Loomer. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Being a sex pest. Um, let me see if I can find it. Because everything's dumb. Like everything she does is uh, it's all about that Uber shit now. Let me just have a look. At my, did I like it? I probably did. Right. Let me just see if it's here. But um. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Hang on, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Sorry, I've gone off on a mad tangent here, by the way. So <laughs> you were supposed to rein me in. <laughs> That's a good tangent, man. Well, uh, while while I'm looking for that, uh, I'll tell you. Good news, they finally beat the Fatberg. By the way, did they? They mine through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here you go. Look, uh, you can just bring this up so everybody can rejoice in the chat while I look for this video of Laura Luma making a fucking jackass of herself. Um. Yeah, the 130-ton fatberg blocking the London sewer. It's fine. They finally did it. It took all this time. Finally <laughs> defeated <laughs> after nine-week <laughs> battle. It's so bad, isn't it? Um, so here you go. Uh, I've got the video now. Uh, it's 38 seconds. It's pretty cringe. It's pretty cringe. So it's Laura Loomer, right, who, by the way, likes to say she's not racist is trying to chat up like there was a bunch of stuff about her being like a, a fucking sex pest anyway and hitting on guys and stuff um and keep in mind she talks about how she's like jewish a lot which which is you know she uses that to sort of deflect well i'm definitely not racist i'm jewish you know um which which there's nothing that would prevent you yeah. from yeah you, can be, you, you, can you know be what i mean racist jewish person 100 percent yeah, I, I think if you're a Nazi, it gets a bit more murky and a bit more problematic. If you use that specific term, 
I mean, you can easily be racist and, 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 and Jewish, right? Like, you know, that's fine. So anyway, she did this. Uh, there was lots of videos of her coming out, embarrassing herself. We can three, two, one this. It's it's pretty fucking cringe, dude. But just listen to the shit she said. get me out right so yeah so that's laura fucking luma by the way like i mean you know it's very hard to take her fucking seriously like and i don't know how why anyone would and she's going to be doing a lot of walking um anyway so that's fine but then like there's another dude um which again you're not if you if you align yourself uh with the right on certain issues uh you're not allowed to call this guy out now have you heard of jack Posobiec? Yes. you heard of this guy so uh jack uh Posobiec, um is is a guy who again he likes to call himself a journalist well now one thing people will hopefully know about me is i take the journalism thing very seriously and um jack Posobiec is is uh like lost any right to use the term journalist because he actually made a story up now when i say made a story up i mean not he just printed false information I mean, he actually, as an activist, planted a fake story, then used his journalistic platform for that story to get attention. And again, I've never talked about this on the show. Definitely worth bringing up. Um, the there was there was a story uh, about uh, right, right. There was a story about a sign an anti-Trump protest back in 2016. It's almost a year ago that it got picked up by the media, right? And uh, the sign said, Rape Melania, right? Or Melania, whichever one it is. Um, and obviously that's, you know, M Melania Trump, the, the first lady. Now, it came out that Jack Perso right, everybody went wild about this sign. Everybody went wild. You can see there, I've looked to the Washington Post. Well, it came out that uh, according to BuzzFeed, and again, you can make of it whatever you want, right? Again, just remember everybody's lying some of the time. Buzz that they, they found out and they had uh, a, a Twitter conversation that showed that Jack Posobiec had come up with the idea to have the rape millennia sign and they planted it and he reported on it and everything else. And it was, it was a complete false flag. Same as those fake hate crimes that we hate so much. So he's still walking around calling himself a, a journalist. And they did this again recently. Uh, like Antifa again, they're fucking clowns. They're fucking idiots. But there was this, uh, you know, guys at Mike Cernovich are retweeting it. It's all over. Um, and they tried to tie pedophilia to Antifa. Now, look, the left's got problems with pedophilia anyway because they're trying to say it's a paraphilia, which is technically true. But they don't, you know, they've invented concepts like virtuous pedophiles and Salon are doing articles where they interview them, and it's like going, yeah, I'd never nonce a kid, so it's all all right. And it's like, yeah, all right, well, I don't want you fucking babysitting if it's all the same with you, uh, and I don't want you working in an environment where you might encounter children. Sorry, sorry if that makes me a monster, but I actually care about the well-being of kids, and I don't think you can trust yourself to, to actually do the same. So anyway, um, that's a side issue. I'm definitely not going to go down that rabbit hole. So then this happened, right? 
a bunch of Antifa protesters, idiots, of course, protesting the existence of fictitious Nazis and basically demanding that the government come in and erode free speech laws, which, you know what, maybe Trump will give you what you want. And then no one will be able to say anything and you'll all be locked up in prison, as will anyone who dissents against any future government, right? Let's get rid of that First Amendment, shall we? Let's get rid of it, yeah, and see where we all are. Okay, so they got handed a sign. Okay, and again, it makes you wonder where this sign came from because it's one of the most hokey things I've seen. And a, a few people sort of reported that it definitely was Jack Posobiec again. There's no evidence to suggest that. But they gave them a sign and it said, no white supremacy, no pedo bashing, no Mike Cernovich, sponsored by Nambler, which is the North American Man Boy Love Association. What the fuck? And they held it up and were going, wee, wee. What they didn't show was somebody went, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Immediately afterwards. And then they were like, who gave us that sign? And they went looking for the guy. They were clearly pranked. I don't like Antifa. I think they're pieces of shit. I think, they, I, I think they should be classified as a domestic terrorist group. But this is bullshit. This is just lies. And there's this fucking... All the, all the right extremists are doing everything the left extremists have been doing. And it's just nonsense. It's just... Every, everyone's just full of shit. You just got to pick and choose the issues that you feel strongly about and align yourself with the people at that given moment is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, a lot of people say, oh, you don't bash the right on your show. It, fucking, of course I will. But, you know, there's plenty of grounds to do it. Everybody's right. Like I'm not saying otherwise. It's like I say, the, the, the left are just funnier. <laughs> it's just easier, you know. And it, this is a podcast that's meant to be fun. And not too depressing. I mean, look, you don't even need to give them that sign. Look at the bullshit. End apartheid. <laughs> Colombia doesn't have apartheid. What are you talking about? Don't talk to a South African about apartheid. So anyway, there you go. Um, all right, let's do some... Should we do some comedy now? <laughs> let's do it, bud. Right. Well, nothing says comedy more than a man getting kicked in the balls, right, Sam? <laughs> it's always a classic yeah. of mine. Man. All right. The, the, the pod burster. Everybody likes the pod burster. Okay. A plum smashing. Yeah, a plum smashing. Mm. So, here we go. Uh, I was watching this. I don't even know how I came across it. Like It was um, like a fucking... Somebody linked me to it, to it I think. It was like uh, just... Uh, an MMA thing, you know, like it's 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 on the channel called Road Fighting Championship, and it was from back in June. And I somebody just linked me this video, and I am telling you, I have seen some groin shots in in my time. I have seen people get kicked in the balls. Uh, I've been, I I've experienced very severe testicular injury myself. It's not nice, but there's something hilarious about it. You can't help but laugh. Even though it's potentially <laughs> fatal if done hard enough. Really? It, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can die from being kicked in the Why? balls. Why? Is dude. it literally from the pain or what happens? Does, it fuck, does it fuck your circulation up? How do you die? All right. Can you die from being kicked in the testicles? Uh, here you go. Yes, but only in highly exceptional cases. There you go. Maybe you have to rupture a testy or something. Swells. Uh, apparently, because of the intense pain and bleeding, if you squeeze someone's testicles to the point where they burst, oh. it can induce a heart attack. <laughs> oh, mate, what a way to go! Like, pops it's your well, heart down it. your nuts at the same time. Yeah. Oh, he's done the double popper. That's uh, bad, isn't it? Not, not the double pop, mate. Oh, oh yeah. fucking hell. That's just about a second. So you if you don't want to die, you just keep you calm. Like, <laughs> just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> well, the balls have gone. Yeah, if you keep calm, you want to lose, you lose your balls. If your head goes, you lose your heart. Yeah, better have some deep breaths then. <laughs> right. But anyway, bad. so this this is so savage. Like, I, obviously, oh, occasionally. Just talking about it, but no. yeah, isn't it? That, that low oh. thing yeah, in the stomach, right? The uh, like, like I say, right? Like uh, you occasionally see accidental ball shots, like because people like to kick the inside of yeah. the thigh. That's you, you, you've will... seen a tag every now and then. Yeah, but this guy must have just straight kicked him in. <laughs> I don't know. Right, just 
three to one this shit. Where do you want to start it's, from? Oh, it from the from beginning. Like, beginning. You want to see his tits yeah. and everything. Like. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's in about the same shape as you and me. Like, you know, he <laughs> Man, thinks he's, he's having a fight. He's bigger than me, this cunt. He's got me beat. He must, this guy's like fucking, what, 350 pounds? He's 30, Clem. He's a big <laughs> right. boy. Right. right, so let's let's just play out. I'll, I'll tell you when I'm bored of it. Probably is when you've stopped going. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Three, okay, two, one, one, go. One, go. The sound on. It's really the He's a B, B boy, and he. Look at him, mate. Check out the gems on him. He'll give you a soapy tit wank, you'll remember me. <laughs> he likes his carbs. <laughs> He's not shy for a bit of bread, this cunt. <laughs> no it's just the glove for big boy. <laughs> just the glove touch all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face, man. He's so proud. He's having a bad time. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him crawling, <laughs> trying to give him some air, holding his shorts. <laughs> Oh, cool him down. Oh, I'll give him some air. Someone blow one on, boys. Oh. That guy's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's fully crying. <laughs> oh, oh, he's had enough. He's had enough. <laughs> And the other guy just him up like... <laughs> Man, he looks like someone at the fucking Roswell incident! Fucking putting a blanket over him! Oh, fucking hell! No oh, way, they just covered him! Yeah, he's like dead! Some sort of fucking wounded circus animal! Quick, cover him for the kids' see. Oh, mate. Oh, look, he's just rubbing his head like he's yeah, his mother. Yeah, look at him. It's all good, you all right. <laughs> he's still <laughs> crying. Oh. <laughs> 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 he's fully <laughs> dead. <laughs> he's oh, never cool. fighting again, mate. Yeah, just watching in slow mo. Boom! Oh. Oh. <laughs> right with the toes, like. <laughs> Yeah. Right with the toes, like, oh, boom! Has the cunt got a fucking jock strap on, though? Oh, man, oh, not now, will I? Cup next time, yeah. boy! In the middle? Bang! Right, oh. Oh, so you can start I can't believe they put the blankets yeah. over him, mate. Yeah, just uh, cover, cover up his... Thing is, as well, like, you know when he was pulling that thing? Like, yeah, was it to get the... air, isn't it? Yeah, or had his testicles, like, just... Oh, started bleeding. Had, uh, yeah, had they just gone hard and got massive, like... Oh, that oh. noise! Oh, I have to play that back again. Ah, so bad, isn't it? Oh, my God, but it's, it's like, you can't That's believe so it, can you? Yeah, so there you go. See, classic comedy, man. It's just like that episode of The Simpsons. Hans Moleman, football in groin. Fucking yeah. <laughs> That's a fucking pod burster right oh, there, mate. I hope he keeps burster. calm or his heart's gonna go. Calm down, calm down. He's a big boy anyway. Know like, what? The butter might get to him first if it's not yeah, the adrenaline. Um, Alright, so here's something else that I saw. I thought this was a pretty wicked story, actually, mate. All right? So uh, the Japanese police have been hunting for uh, like a cat burglar, you know? And um, someone who's done like 250 break-ins. And the gimmick was that they were doing it dressed up as a ninja. <laughs> like all, you know, the black outfit and that. Jumping over rooftops. So they finally caught the cunt. And he was a 74-year-old man. Like, legit. So he is an actual Sev fucking ninja. Right? Well, yeah, probably. Like. <laughs> Just living it. Living out his retirement, mate, needed a taste of the action again.
I don't think you understand. He's robbed two. He's got bored at seventy four, <laughs> right? He's got fucking bored at seventy four, right? And he's decided I'm just going to become a cat. I'm be dead soon. I'll just become a cat burglar. Ah, how am I going to do this then? Fuck it. Dress up as a ninja, and he's skipping across rooftops in the middle of the night. Net, net, caught on security camera. No one's ever got him because they're all thinking, "Fucking look how nimble this cunt is." He's fucking ninja for real. Yeah, yeah he's obviously got to be like 20, 30, nah, 74. Man. What an animal. Seventy four. What a fucking absolute. If I were younger, I wouldn't have been caught as well. What a fucking animal. He's like, you already got me because I was getting old, boys. Absolute animal, man. I'll quit now as I'm seventy four and old enough. <laughs> Absolute beat. Is, you can't send that cunt to jail. Nah. I don't care. You need to employ him to fucking start killing the most wanted people in the world. People are going to say I'm just saying this to be funny, right? I'm not. I'll tell you what, right? If I got robbed, like legit robbed, right? And then fucking, you know, I've lost some pretty good gear in that. I mean, obviously, if it's a rooftop cat burglar, he can't strap all my shit to his back. You know, he's he's, he's gonna have to make the a choice. The watches and the good shit. Yeah, man. yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, and I don't have a lot of jewelry or whatever. You know, if he took my watch and my phone, I'd be pissed off. But then, if the cops came to me and oh, we got a suspect and we think he's seventy-four, I'm like, fucking, bring fucking him in him for up. a pint. <laughs> yeah, let him. Like, can I can I hang out with this guy? Like, serious? Like, what have I got to do? Like. I'd go meet him. I would lie in court. I'd do everything I could, like, to get him to get him off. You can't send a seventy-four-year-old ninja to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. He's done mate. his time, mate. mate yeah, imagine what this motherfucker was doing when he was thirty. If he's robbing from rooftops at seventy-four, what kind of crazy shit was he doing in his prime? That's what, that now. Now that's a different fucking question, yeah. isn't it? Because this guy might have been an absolute hardcore fucking animal, like street samurai yeah. killing people, hit man in life. But yeah, you you know what I mean? Like, fucking fair play to him. Like, what a beast. Like, that story fucking tickled me. Right, anyway, so uh, prepare yourselves. We'll go, we'll get serious for a bit. Um, keep one eye on the time. Oh, you know what, though? Should we get serious? Or should we just, because, we, yeah, we'll have to talk about Halloween. Did you do anything for Halloween? I don't fuck. Traveling. <laughs> Did I fuck? <laughs> well, where, where, where where, where you were, did anything happen for Halloween? Uh, nah, because I, I literally arrived at the airport on Halloween. I didn't even see anyone fucking dressed up. Like, saw a couple of pumpkins in the hotel. That was pretty much the extent of it. Well, you know me, I like Halloween, and it's one of my favorite holidays. And uh, you know, it's kind of been ruined the last few years. Another reason why. I've never liked the the left with a outrageous sense of political correctness. Like I I, I read a article actually because I, I got a bunch of um like you know a, a bunch of pieces to go over, but I'll only pick a handful out because every year with Halloween now there's just this like outrage about Halloween costumes, like what you can and can't wear. And I saw this um I saw this quote in it, and it was like basically along the lines of if your child wants to wear a costume. Um, and it's fr from like another, a, a, like a cartoon character who's a different race to your child. Then just don't do it because the happiness of your child doesn't supersede potential offense. And I thought, like, who lives like that? Really? Like, I, what? I got to deprive my kids. Here's the thing nowhere else in society does that logic hold up, by the way. No. Like, think about when you go on a plane. And like kids are just running around, just fucking loose on the plane. Just loose, just wild. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, just coming up to people, like shaking your chair and kicking the back of your chair. You know, you don't go. Uh, excuse me, the happiness of your child doesn't matter actually. So, um, can you can if you but don't stop though, them, like if we're being real, hundred percent done the plate. Yeah, no, but it just under like it, it just is what it is. Like as a parent, it matters to you and it matters to the kid, and then it doesn't matter to anybody else. That's the nature of human interaction. That's the nature of the human experience. But we all make concessions because they're kids. And if somebody said to me, and I, obviously I don't have kids and won't have kids, all my kids are like you know the bastard children of esports like you. You know, I am your true father, Sam. I'm uh, fucking Oliver. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not the esports fagin. <laughs> <don't say that. laughs> 
I don't put you to work in the house. Now, like this is how you do journalism. Please, please, Richard, can I have some more casting work? <laughs> he thinks he can have some more, does he? You already had the like minor that. boy. <laughs> it's not like that. Why are you always the fucking hitcher? Because <laughs> that's what Fig and Sons like. It. You're right there, boy. Come at me, that yellow cable. Um, so anyway, uh, y- you know, like, if, if but if I did have a kid, and it's Halloween, and it's like one, you know, your childhood is super limited. It's super limited. One of the great tragedies that we always talk about is, like, think about Michael Jackson. What, are we, what did everybody always say about Michael Jackson? Is this some sort Come of trick question? <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> well. I don't know what you want me to say. I've got a definite answer here. Right, King so of Pop, forget- we'll go with a safe one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just forget the nonsense right, for okay. two minutes. All right. What people used to say was, oh, I don't think he did those things. Uh, I just think he was trying to recapture something because he didn't right, have okay. a childhood. Right? Everybody says it. They say it about all these childhood actors that are all fucked up, you know? Oh, they didn't have a childhood. They didn't have a childhood. That's what everyone says, right? They didn't have a childhood. Because not having a childhood is really bad. You know? I mean, it's a bit worse for fucking child soldiers in, like, you know, the Congo. We never talk about them so much, the Western decadent pigs that we are, you know? But obviously not having a childhood, being forced into adulthood at an age where you're not emotionally ready, sometimes not physically ready, it's it's an anathema. It's, you know, it's not what we're supposed to do. We, we've actually, as we've become more civilized, we've extended the period of adolescence. You know, think about it. It wasn't, in, in, in even in, you know, let's just look at our culture. People used to go down and get fucking jobs at like 12, didn't they? I'm off down the workhouse, yeah. ma'am. See mining. Ya. Straight mining, yeah. People lying about their age, 14, going off to war to die in in World War One. you know? People grew up faster back then. It, it's actually a great thing that adolescence has been extended. Again, I'm sure some, all these right-winged extremists that talk about degeneracy and all of this stuff will say it's a bad thing, but I don't think it is. I think it's great. I've led a life where I've tried to shield myself from as much adult responsibility as possible even now when I'm clearly a fucking adult. I don't care. Um, So childhood is something to be treasured. And if my kid wants to dress up as something, there's limits. There's limits. I don't know why my child would come to me and go, can I put on a KKK outfit? No. It's Halloween. I probably draw the line at that. Probably that's where the line is, okay? But can I dress up as this cartoon character in my favorite cartoon? Well, yeah. And what's interesting is if you're a boy and if if the father says, no, you can't dress up as Elsa from Frozen because she's a girl, you would say to that parent, oh, God, that's terrible. And you're like, well, no, I'm, I'm reinforcing gender norms. And you're going, yeah, we don't do that anymore. Now, if you want to dress up as, I'm, I'm going to struggle here, uh, is it Mona? Yeah, the other Mona one that, Moana. Uh, yeah, I think it's Mona. Um, you know, it, it, it beca- and you can't do that because you're white. Well, yeah, obviously you can't. You, you, that's what people say. So I'm of the opinion that I don't think if you put on one of those suits with the Maori tattoos, I don't, I don't think you're being racially inappropriate. But it was, it, it was really fucked up because there was... Um, an article actually that came out and it sort of compared to opinion pieces. And basically the premise of it was, um, if you go as Mona, you're being racist, but if you go as Elsa, you're enforcing the idea of a white supremacy. So it's like, everything's rapidly becoming off the table. I remember seeing a tweet as well. Like, of people from that culture all tweeting like, "Yeah, I'm definitely not offended if, you, if your child wants to be Moana and represent our culture." <laughs> like, because it's just not offensive. It they love your culture. They want to dress up. It's not like it's being detrimented upon. It's a ch- it's a yeah. kid who loves a fucking cartoon. But like, uh, hey, I'll, I'll show you the. Um, I'll see if I can find the one for Elsa uh, about ideas of whiteness i think it was how it was worded um yeah there you go it promotes the idea of white beauty 
Um, which what do is, they get to go as? Is it just pumpkins? Can we all agree that we're allowed to be pumpkins? I, I don't even know, mate. Or do you the know, pumpkins but it, were initially grown by someone else, so we're not. Is 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 the here's the uh, piece uh, raising race race conscious in children uh, is the name of of the blog, and it's a resource for talking about race with young children. I thought, I and thought the goal was to you get can't rid be of either. That. Well, I mean... Isn't, isn't the it, end you, goal that nobody is race conscious and everyone is just equal? Isn't that... I thought that's what well, we want. Well, no, because it's all got intertwined with culture. And if you say you don't see race or believe in race, you're racist. And if you're conscious of it all the time and it informs what you do, you're racist. So what you have to do is if you have to accept that you're genetically racist if you're white. Um, and oh, that... that that's what people are. I mean, I saw that Why tweeted you? out as well. I, I don't know. I, it, it just seems mad to me. Like, I, Why that's, have that's I got to be I, genetically racist? Why is that a thing? I don't think that's real. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard people say that, like, almost as just flippantly, like, a matter of fact, oh, well, you're white, so you are racist on some level, aren't you? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, like, why do, I, why do I have to sign up for that? So it, it, it's, it's, it's just a super rigged game. I, I think the people it behooves to constantly talk about race and constantly push race, they will constantly do so. And the people that don't want to talk about it, don't have to but increasingly you can't really avoid it like everything is somehow tied to it these days even something as benign as like halloween they want to police it and and have people sort of constantly aware of like you know everything you do could be construed as as racist um and and that's what i mean it's like i don't even necessarily think it's just a white thing because Increasingly, I've talked to a lot of black people who have been, you know, we, we all know about the whole Uncle Tom nonsense that they get. You know, if you're a if you're a black conservative in America now, they don't make it about your political opinions. They make it about you know you're betraying your race, and it's like, well, why can't blacks, why can't black people be conservative? Well, where did that come from? When did that become a a rule? Yeah, why, why has race got to dictate opinion? That's one of the most racist yeah. things I've ever heard. So it, it's really bizarre. Um, but anyway, so Halloween came. And as I said, I say it every time on the podcast. I love Halloween. I really do. We all sit around. We watch horror movies, right? Yeah. We have a, you know, we, we fucking, kids are coming out and exploring boundaries, you know, dressing up, getting scared. You know, if, for me, I, I don't know if it's something that happened in my childhood, but I always thought Halloween was like, Kind of, it was a, it was a good area where you would explore stuff, right? So you like you're you know you get to leave the house by yourself with a group and you dress up, and you know you knock on other adults' doors and money and and, and candy and people will be scaring each other and oh uh, okay but it's all all right really and then you get to do things that maybe you don't get to do at any other time of the year, kind of like all the other great holidays. Like you know I used to watch super you know like I'd stay up late on Halloween and watch like outrageous horror movies that like, even when I was really young and clearly under 18, um, it'd be trick or treat and I'd be watching 18 horror movies. It's where it's inextricably linked to my love of horror as a genre. So I really like it. And I just think it's sad that it's, it's, it's fucked up now. You can't do any, you, you know, people are like, Oh, don't do this and don't do that. And don't do this and don't do that. And it's like, it was the one day, a year as a kid, you know, you could you could dress up with something grotesque and it's all right, and you could shock people and it's okay, you know, and and it's it's just not there now. So there was a bunch of articles. Let me let me just show you this, and obviously for adults as well. Like fuck, when I was at university, all the best parties were at Halloween. I remember one time I dove. Right, we we lived on my first year. I lived in a hall. Uh, so if anyone's been to university, you know what I'm talking about, the cheap shitty halls of residence, and you basically get put in there with like, I don't know, up to seven other strangers. Yeah. I, I think our block only had six, can't remember. But anyway, you don't know them, and you just muddle through, and your hall of residence becomes part of your identity, yeah. and these We're people... You all meet in the kitchen. You all meet in the kitchen, you've got your shared communal area, and those, uh, you know, uh, that was where, you know, I met Ming... <laughs> rest, in peace. rest in peace Benjamin uh, I met another guy another guy who looked exactly like Jesus He every Halloween Jesus every time one time he wasn't allowed to go into the student union bar because they said a crucifix can be used as a weapon he had a big bull <laughs> crucifix used as a weapon. 
also only for the cunt who's nailed to it right but but so anyway we were we were we used to love fucking halloween we used to really go fucking ham at halloween Uh, and as you know from the story about that's when ben became ming because of a wicked halloween party anyway well i went as freddy krueger uh old school freddy krueger not this new school shit not remake shit and you know i had the mask you know the pizza face uh big jumper uh you know black and red stripes iconic and made a glove, but instead of real knives, I just had like butter knives because that was the joke, right? It was funny. And I remember walking uh, home, I'm fucking absolutely arsehole. And uh, one of the girls that lived in our hall, uh, Emily, right? she um, she used to sleep with a window open, you know? Right. So I thought. <laughs> He's out of creep. <laughs> I thought this this will be inappropriately hilarious. So I just jumped. <laughs> 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 I jumped through the window. Like some sort of shit stunt yeah. double. Yeah, like just, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it would tumble, like dressed as fucking Freddy with a hat on and everything, right? Like, she was like, already passed out from too much wine or something, like proper fucking scared the shit out of her. Like, <laughs> Freddy! <laughs> Screaming, it's Freddy, you know what I mean? Coming through your window. <laughs> that, was, that was fucking banter! That was hilarious banter! Banter, I tell thee. <laughs> I told the judge it was me a banter. <laughs> breaking an entry. You know, like you had fun back then. No one got hurt. She nearly shit herself. <laughs> but... <laughs> Couple of brown sheets for those will come out. Yeah, exactly. And it's over now, you know? It's just, it's just. So I've always loved it, is my point. I've always loved fucking Halloween. But, um,. Yeah, so is is just look at some of the fucking nonsense that comes out, right? Like, how did people get triggered by this? Now, you might have heard of a guy called Donald Trump, right? Have you heard uh, of him? Never knew He's that. um, <clears throat> he used to be a TV guy. Before that, he was a businessman. And uh, anyway, guy, guy who feeds fish. <laughs> 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 well, he became president. Sam, he became president. He did. Um, in in uh, one of the greatest political upsets of all time, and one of his pledges I've, is he I'm wants getting to... told he's not president, though, mate. Lots of people say yeah, he's not. Uh, hashtag the resistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all about Hillary or something. It, by the way, if anyone has hashtag the resistance in their Twitter bio or has ever used it, they're a cunt, <laughs> and you should just instantly <laughs> discount them as you know people and just don't talk to them. Done so. you a favor, really. They just let you know yeah. from the get go. Yeah, fuck, fuck that noise. Um, you are not the resistance. The brave people who fucking, you know, tried to uh, stop Nazi occupation in France and had, like, uh, special, you know, underground uh, tunnels to get Jews away from being killed. They were a resistance. You're a twat. <laughs> it's completely different. Um, but anyway, so don't, this guy, Donald Trump, right? He's 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 president now, Sam. He's president Donald Trump, whether you like it or not. Um, he uh, he has said he's going to build a wall, and I was like, well, "What does he mean, build a wall?" And uh, you know, in his garden, you know, around the White House, where is he going to build this wall, Sam? Well, he's going to build a wall on the border between America and Mexico, right? And the thought process is because he's 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 not really thought it through. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not really thought it through. Um, I don't know if anyone explained to him how people are getting into America illegally. Uh, it's not because there's no wall there. They don't go fucking hell. I'm gonna go to the border. Wait, just walk along. There's no fucking what. I just I just walk in. I'm here. They can't do anything. Fucking idiots. Well, I tell everybody back home about this. If you if you want to leave, you can just. You just there's no wall. That's not what's happening, right? Obviously, uh, people are being smuggled in <laughs> in cars or people are finding where, areas where there is no uh, border patrol and they drive and they come and they get like, you know, fake social service cards and fake credentials or sometimes they don't even do that and they can't do that and they get paid uh, to do basically cash and, and work, which of course 
companies love to use. Nobody ever talks about this part of the equation. Why do people keep coming to America? Oh, that's right. There's a horde of corporations and businesses that'll happily take your illegal cheap labor. Uh, you know, I've even read articles about like workers who've come from Mexico working cash in hand and they die and they don't even tell people about it. They just bury them in like unmarked graves. Or, like, like some sort of mafia. Yeah, read it, read it. This is what cor- this is what this is what corporations are happy to do. Not all of them, obviously, but some of them that they'll take they'll take your cash in hand, untaxed labor because it's cheaper for them. It's better for them. They've got you by the balls. You can't speak out in turn against an employer that literally controls whether or not you go back to Mexico or not. They can just drop a dime to ICE anytime they want. They have you wholesale. This is a much more uh, pleasant relationship for the employer and employee than, let's say, oh, imagine if you're an employee and you have rights, <laughs> workers' a union rights. union and people yeah, in union. front of you. All, well, all of a sudden. Guarantees. Yeah. This is why immigrant labor legal immigrant labor and again you know there's people in the chat right now they're absolutely on point you know fast food industry is 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 one of them you know look it, it, you read stories about this all the time and like you understand okay i do not uh i i think if you're in a country illegally the country is well within its right to send you away yeah that's the risk you take right that's the whole point right I'm not necessarily saying, and nobody, I don't think anyone is doing this anyway, but it just bears repeating. I'm not saying that you're a criminal and you should go to prison and be, yeah, I'm not saying that, right? I'm saying if you come into a country illegally and the country says you shouldn't be here, you don't have the right paperwork, we've done no checks, you've got a cash in hand job and you don't pay taxes, sorry, we're going to send you back home. Sorry about that. Oh, and you probably have foregone any right to come back because you didn't go through the proper channels. I don't really have a problem with that. I'm sorry if that makes me evil these days i'm sorry if that is the low bar for being evil but when i go to a country i respect and obviously it's different you want to get a visa didn't you mate i had to get a visa but it is different for me sure i'm not as economically impoverished as a as a migrant worker right i understand that also i am in a privileged position dare i say it i get it i worked hard to get it i've been dirt poor right but I still stand by the idea that you should – you've got to be on a file somewhere. The country's got to know what you're up to. You've got to have the paperwork. You've got to contribute your taxes. If you take out, you've got to put in. I believe in all of those values, right? So anyway, that's, again, another, another mad tangent, of course. But Donald Trump seems to think if he builds a wall, right, they're not going to get in anymore. And he's obviously not – yeah, he's obviously not heard of – Cars. <laughs> he's obviously not heard of Unless trucks. this wall has no gates at all. <laughs> and you're just blocking right. it entirely. Now just think about it, though. Right? Think about what he's saying. We're going to build a wall, okay? And there's going to be people, uh, guards, at the gates, right? We've already got that. <laughs> It's just not a wall. It's just like a shitty little fence. But we've got Border Patrol. And Border Patrol, occasionally they'll flag over a truck and they'll have a look and they won't find anyone on it. Sometimes they don't. Yeah, they won't find anyone on it, right? And you'd be like, how's that, Richard? Well, okay, look, have you seen have you seen the shit they do? Oh, like hiding uh, underneath the tires and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me find this. There was a story recently. Um they they was this in the summer? I think it I think it might be this one. Um basically, okay, there was this truck uh which had smuggled in some Mexican immigrants and it had a fake floor and there was barely any space. Like people couldn't even believe it was a fake floor, right? And what they'd done is because they were driving through like, you know, Mexico, uh, Texas, you know, whatever it was. And it's super hot. So what they did is they had about this much, you know, this much space, right? And they just packed everything else out with solid blocks of ice. So they didn't overheat and die, which is like one of the common things that happens to people coming in. And these huge trucks, sometimes they dehydrate. Sometimes trucks get pulled over and nobody finds them in the fake walls and they just die of you know, dehydration or asphyxiation. It's horrible, right? But what they were doing was they were lying on solid slabs of ice and they died. Fucking hell. 
and the bodies were just preserved. They said it was like slabs of meat. Now, let's say they don't die. Does the wall, did a wall stop them getting in? Does the wall play any part? Obviously, the wall's not going to do fuck all, is it, mate? It's not about a fucking wall. But whatever, build it. You promised you're going to build it, build it. Waste taxpayers' money building something that was never about in the first place. Build the wall. Fantastic. Side issue. I had to say all of that just to set this up. Because here's the outrage. Because of the wall, Sam. The wall is obviously scary to some people. To liberals, it's the sign of America closing off its borders and becoming more fascist. doesn't necessarily represent that, in fact, if at all. Uh, it's just an idiot building a, a, a wall. You know, People compare it to the Berlin Wall. It's not like that at all, because that divided a nation yeah. that was once to, together. Mexico and America, well, you know, you probably have to go back a ways. Um, I should know my history, but yeah, as far as I'm aware, Mexico and America have been independent forever. So to those people, it's scary to, uh, obviously Mexican immigrants, you know, it, it represents something that probably isn't very palatable to think about, but I wouldn't call it out and out racist. Well, anyway, party city, you know, party city, they're yeah. a company that just sell costumes that we, I used to live in Vegas and I used to live not far from a party city. I Balloons, used to go to party chi- stuff. Yeah. I used, to, I used to go to a Chili's out in, out near on the outskirts of Vegas. Uh, it was a Chili's a taco shack. And then there was party city, right? And, you know, you just see people coming out, they go in normal, they come out dressed as clowns or whatever, you know. Um, well, anyway, they made a co- they made this costume, uh, The Wall. Now, now, just look out. First of all, can we just comment on how shit it is, Sam? <laughs> <clears throat> can we just talk about how shit The Wall costume is? Could have at least made it a box, like my, my costume. At least make it the right shape. Not giving it a sleeveless wall. I, 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 gotta, be, I gotta be honest, Sam. The wall uh, is actually worse than the SpongeBob costume. <laughs> oh, yeah, mine's banging. Yeah. Mine won, mate. Yeah, Let's I mean, it does, it does, it's not helped by the fact. Uh, if you look at the cunt who's modelling it, <laughs> just looks land, didn't it? <laughs> I'm a wall, <laughs> you know. Like. So, um, this was declared to be a racist costume. It's just a wall with the word the wall written on it. Now, first of all, as well, I've got to say, it's got the same kind of graphical uh, graphic style as Pink Floyd. Yeah, it does wall. a bit. Right? So I'm just putting that out there. That it is, they probably had a bunch of fucking Pink Floyd sofas or something left over. How the fuck are we ever going to get rid of them? Fuck me. The fucking 80s, we were all so fucking high. <laughs> and then it's like, Donald Trump's like, hey, we're building a fuck Halloween costume. We can repurpose them. No problem, right? But this was deemed to be, like, again, look at that tweet there. If cultural appropriation on Halloween isn't for you, here's a directly racist. What is right? Like, am I am I mentally ill? Like, uh, uh, did I lose it somewhere? Is that is that directly racist? It's not, is no, it? Definitely not directly racist. Good. Good. Anyway, there was a ton of articles about this. Uh, one, you know, Teen Vogue run there. Right? <laughs> They're getting shut down. It's brilliant. Um, you know, what the fuck? Like, do you know what I mean? Come on, dudes. That isn't fucking racist. Um, then there was. Let me find uh, some of the other uh, uh, some of the other outrage that occurred. Uh, right now, you know. You ever heard of this thing called a noose, Sam? (laughs) Yes, I am aware. (laughs) Yeah, right, good. Oh, you might have. Now, a noose is a a tie. It's it's a piece of rope used with a specific knot. I always forget what it's called because I never, I never was a Boy Scout. But is it something loose? No, does it have like the hangman? Is it called the hangman's knot or something? Have a look. Have a look. It's also a film. Or is it? Or is it a? Or is it a triple shank? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called a hangman's knot. Mm. How to tie a hangman's knot? That's what. Noose. That, 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 that's what I thought. Yeah. So, the 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 noose. Basically, when you wanted to hang people to kill them, um, and this is 
this was very popular method of execution for many years because it's low cost. Uh, and so it was believed it was believed to be humane because what they used to do if if you um, paid if you paid the jailhouse this is in frontier America if you paid the jailhouse money they would allow somebody to help you as you jump or they would tie weights to your legs before they pushed you off and what this did was it would break your neck so you would die quicker as a result of that be a disconnect um, rather than slowly asphyxiate Uh so anyway, it's pretty ghoulish, and it's been a popular method of uh, killing people yeah. uh, for a long, long time. We obviously know as well, uh, a lot of people who've committed suicide will hang themselves. I just googled it Do as well, a little fucking mm. tidbit of information. It's actually illegal to display a noose in a threatening manner in New York and Connecticut. Mm. Doesn't doesn't surprise me. Um so, like, because one of the most when I googled handman's not the next one was like, is it illegal to even tie one? Mm. It's pretty weird. Interesting. Um, so so obviously I I have never you know nooses they're just nooses. You know, let's say you wanted to go to Halloween as a as a ghost of somebody that had hung themselves. You know, there's famous examples of this. You would probably put a noose around with a sheet, and ooh, right? And that's what people do. It's like a ghoulish thing. It's Halloween. So there was this bar um, that had somebody with like a Halloween costume in it, and they had a noose around their neck. Um, and 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 the person doing the hanging was a, in a cowboy costume again, suggesting it was frontier justice. Well, this was deemed to be racist. It was a white guy holding up a rope that was around a white guy's neck. And this was deemed to be racist on the basis that lynchings existed. <clears throat> there's no reference to it being a lynching. There's, there's nothing to make you think it is a lynching. But the NAACP got involved, threatened to sue the owner of the restaurant and said, I, as many, this is the statement here, is reported uh, by NewJersey.com, um, I, as many others, are appalled that your establishment would condone such an act, giving it symbolic implications for black people throughout history. The American history of lynching black people is well known, and the hangman's noose has been a historical symbol of intimidation. And pe once this blew up, people were saying this was unacceptable. Um, and of course, the this is what you have to do. They immediately apologized, got rid of the picture, um, and said, you know, we do all this. We're, we're really sorry. Um, but then the attorney for the restaurant came out and said, we believe there's no intentional racist message. And we don't even think there is an inadvertent racist message. And we think you really have to stretch to interpret this as having any kind of racial connotation. Cause obviously you do, uh, if it was a white person holding up a noose that was around a black person's neck and he was wearing perhaps, ooh, some sheet-like attire, that's different. That's different. Um, but anyway, they, 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 they settled. They settled with the, uh, the, hang, the, the, the restaurant that did the hangman's noose. Um. Uh, utterly absurd. Um, so that was that, right? Then, uh, what was the other thing that people were complaining about? Well, just generally, you just can't, you just can't wear anything that sort of references a foreign culture, references World War Two, uh, references uh, certain types of death. Um, it's bonkers. Like, just look at this, right? This is Halloween. Kind of has a lot to do with death in general. Check this out. This was uh, this is the insider. Sixteen offensive Halloween costumes you shouldn't wear this year. So let's have a look. So first of all, anything to do with Native Americans is out, right? Um, so you can see there, the Dreamcatcher costume is cultural appropriation. Not a real thing. Doesn't exist. You can't uh, appropriate a culture. You can pay homage to a culture um you can represent a culture you cannot appropriate and steal a culture you cannot do it um then there was this this one seemed a bit 
strange. The sexy shooter happy hour costume. And it's uh, a, a woman uh, with uh, a very amply framed woman, it's got to be said. I think you'd have to have a certain type of physique to really get away with this outfit. Uh, she's wearing a, 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 a dress and she's holding a uh, like a holster, like a, a Western holster. Are you getting, you know, the Wild West? Right. And there's a bottle of tequila in it. And she's holding up a shot and she's wearing a sombrero. Well, that's racist because that's racist against Mexicans. Why though? Then if you go down here, uh, the men's Arab chic costume draws on false stereotypes of Middle Eastern culture. I want you to have a look at that costume, Sam. Okay. Have a look at it. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Sam? Stop giggling. What are my thoughts? I don't know. What, what, are, you, what, are, what are your thoughts about the costume? Like, it says it's unfair stereotypes right right okay well here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna show you a picture sam bring this picture up right right this is a picture okay this is a picture of the saudi arabian royal family okay right. let's have a look at that image and then have a look at the costume again right Yeah. Now, am I? Do I need to say it? Because, <laughs> because they they object, they object to it on the basis, right? They say it 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 uh, harmfully reinforces negative and misconceived notions about a group of people. Is it just so the just knife go... that they've got a problem with? No, but it's ceremonial, isn't it? They, they they do actually carry those. In fact, if you look closely, I think you can see one at the bottom uh, left. Um, it's you know, I, I, I again, I would I can't profess to know the exact cultural reason for it, but it's it's like you know, Sikhs have that knife, the the kirpan. Yeah. It's symbolic. It's not. Yeah, and it is Halloween, so. He, isn't the whole he's supposed to be a killer of some kind? Like that's what I said. It's Halloween. Everyone's either dead or gonna kill you. That's kind of the idea. So, I I I wouldn't look at that and go, "You're being racist." Like I would look at that and go, "What a very accurate <laughs> costume." It, it's pretty pretty crazy. And then if you go down one, uh, you'll see the golden geisha costume. Right, and they just say this could be seen as cultural appropriation. What a nice dress! Yeah, what a nice say, that's outfit. Some, that's some snazzy shit, mate. Yeah, if I was in a shirt. I'd wear it. I love that shit. That's big. Now let me just. I just want to show you something, right? Because this is you're you're a bit younger than me. Do you remember Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom? Yeah. It's a great movie, isn't it? I mean, I love all the India. I love the original. I love the trilogy, right? Now, lick, lick, lick my there's, um, oh, what's her name? Is it Willie? They call her Willie call in the, in the Willie. film. Yeah, Willie Scott, right? See, I know this shit, right? Um, so, Willie Scott, right? Is is the because obviously with Indiana Jones he goes on an adventure and for each of the adventures because we don't talk about Crystal Skull Crystal Skull never happened Crystal Skull never happened don't ever talk about it um th th he goes on an adventure and the, he's a fucking legend he's Indiana Jones he's he's a teacher but then when he goes out and he's Jones in he's a fucking baller and he? he fucking discovers religious artifacts he gets women he's got women all over the world. And the woman in that is Willie Scott. No one ever says Willie Scott's racist. Yeah, she she did it in time, mate. She wasn't. She didn't do it in 2017. Yeah, but like, what if I wanted to go as Willie Scott? <laughs> what are you dressed as, Willie Scott? Not me. But like, look at that. I think that's slick, dude. I don't think she's culturally appropriate, not being racist. I think she's being goddamn attractive, is what she's doing. I stared. That one's a bit intense for me. Like, is it? 
That looks like some fucking bad trick. Yeah, it's not the best picture. Just, just, just me. But like, look at that. That's a fucking wicked outfit. That's just like you said, it's not even Halloween. That's just a go out dress. Right. This might get a bit problematic for you, Sam, the next one. <laughs> I guarantee, by the way, you're the kind of fucker I can picture who has actually wore something like this at some point in his life. Let's have a look. So it goes, think twice about anything that could have questionable implications. <laughs> this Rasta costume kit <laughs> might be cause for concern. This one was sold at Walmart, by the way. This is What are you doing? Why are you wrecking Willie Scott, mate? Stop. <laughs> but this, Rasta, uh, this Rasta costume kit, right? Now, here's the thing. It's. I don't see what they're getting upset about here. Because when I saw Rast the costume, I'm like, here we go. Here we go. Um, but no, basically, it's, uh, you know, a traditional sort of Rastafarian top uh, with, with the, the artwork that you would associate with that particular culture. The color of the Jamaican flag on the hat. And the hat has dreadlocks in it as well. Now, obviously... White people can have dreadlocks. Yeah. I've seen you, it. You, yeah, I've definitely I've seen it. It's I've seen real. It. Yeah, I've seen it, so I know it's real. Um and he's not blacked himself up, right? <laughs> he's, he's not, not he's, he's not, not gone next level. Yeah, he's not blacked himself up. <laughs> uh, it, Your Honor, I'll have you find I did not even black myself up prior to wearing the reggae oh. costume. <laughs> He's not doing blackface, so what's the problem? Why is that a problem? He's just rocking the fucking Elton John glasses and the rare gay suit. Yeah, isn't it? Like, I would wear a fuck out that. Like, yeah, I, I, I put it put it this way, right? I used to do, I used to do a radio show. Um. And well, I I worked on two. There used to be this radio station. I don't know if it's still going. Uh, New Style FM over in Birmingham, right? And they used to have, uh, like they used to we used to do this radio show. I used to do it with a couple of friends. I was in, yeah, I was partially. In, all right. Well, they used to do this thing called the it was called the Quantum Rug Traders, right? And it was um it, I was involved very loosely in it. I was a later addition. It was with my mate Al. And uh, this other guy who was like a, a reverend um, in the Unitarian Church. <laughs> and we used to work. The studio was basically, um, you know, they used to have like Rastafarian music on. It was either before us or yeah, after yeah, us. But they would often. Yeah, they, they would be often. They'd often hang around uh, the, the studio, right? The, the, the Rastafarian guys. And we had a fucking great time and, you know, we'd, we'd pass joints around and whatever and just play some good music. And it was awesome, right? Now, I guarantee you, if I went in to the studio wearing that outfit, <laughs> no one would have said a fucking yeah, word. there would have been no digs exchanged. Mate, no one would have said a fucking word. <laughs> I think they would have said a word. <laughs> I think they no. would have acknowledged it. They would have just no. gone... Yeah, right, Rich. <laughs> there must have been obviously, some insight. Obvi- no, if obviously I had fake dreads. Yeah, the yeah. Way, yeah. Maybe. Oh, no, if you wear those I'm... clothes, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I so I mean, if you came in from yeah. me having a skinhead and then you just got dreads coming from a yeah. hat, yeah, there yeah, would yeah, be yeah. some they'd, questions asked. They'd be talking about that for different reasons, right? <laughs> Are you all right? They know I'm off. Yeah, but like, nobody would have given a flying fuck. In fact, some people that embrace certain cultures dress like that anyway. Regardless of color, right? So I didn't have that one. Then the one below it, and this one, this blew up. This was in all the news. Uh, it was a, a Anne Frank costume, like an Anne Frank old costume. All right, maybe that is unreasonable. Um, and what they did is they put it under the name World War II Evacuee. Oh, well, so it's not okay, specifically it's still Anne a weird Frank. costume, though. I'll tell you what, you can have that one. I won't die on that hill. But, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it just, it's of the time, right? It just looks like a World War II costume, right? And the, to be fair, the people who manufacture this came out and said it is in no way meant to resemble Anne Frank. And again, it was sold at Walmart. It's just a weird costume. So, yeah, I just, I don't see why. 
No kids Anyone. asking. What do you want to go for yeah. Halloween? I want to go as a World War II refugee. And if that costume isn't there, I'm going as nothing. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> like some of the things are it's so retarded, though. Some of the objections. Like, there's a tweet saying, there are better ways to commemorate Anne Frank. No one's going <laughs> to... I know what will commemorate Anne Frank. This Halloween costume. Anyway, you scroll down. This is called Dia de los Beauty. All right, now, control yourself, Sam. Uh, it's Apparently, it's patronizing and problematic. Uh, because if you're not Mexican, you're not allowed to dress for uh-huh. Day of the Dead. Or what, what's it called? Uh, de los Muertes or whatever. Yeah, Day of the Dead. Mm. It's, in, it's in Breaking Bad, if anyone's seen it. I'm sure you've had a few people have seen Breaking Bad. I didn't even know it was from that, to be honest. It just looked like some it's not sort from of that. skeleton. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not from that. It's They do like a, a, a sort of um, ritual, an, like an equivalent yeah, ritual where you have to crawl on your belly in it to appease them, and it's because they want to kill fucking Heisenberg or whatever, you know. Um, it's in there. It's one of the little preambles. But it's a real thing anyway. Uh, Dia de las Muertes is, is a real thing. Um, so, again, that's just an outrageous objection. And, I again, rather nice to yeah, rather nice costume, isn't it? Can you go down here? This inflatable ballerina costume requires well, now you're wearing bullying a... fat people. I've got to get involved. <laughs> Try to avoid costumes that can be interpreted as body shaming. Like, come on, Wrong mate. The There's so many monsters that are fat and stuff. You know what? Can we not go with Shrek now? It's it's Shrek off. Appropriation, man. Yeah, pork appropriation. Look. So you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Costumes with misogynistic implications like this droopers ensemble should be avoided at all costs. Now I'ma tell you, this costume works on many levels, Sam. <laughs> yeah, this is good. It works on many levels. I'm gonna tell you why. Because obviously you know Hooters, right? Yeah. You're familiar with the concept of Hooters. Hooters is a real thing. Um it's a bar. It's basically for Fucking creepy old man. losers. No, it's for losers who won't nut up and just go to a strip club. It's like, oh, oh God, I couldn't do that. Could, could I? Oh, no. Oh, we'll just go to Hooters. It's like, you're the same kind of asshole, but at least one guy's doing it right. You know, one set of assholes are doing Every it right. Every time I walk like, past Hooters, it's just like old men, usually. It's just like... Four, no, like not old, but like forty-year-old men. Maybe again, maybe I got a warped perspective on it because I live in Atlanta, where there's it feels like there's more strip clubs per fucking square inch than anywhere in America. Like, I mean, and again, that includes Vegas, right? So I, I, I fucking like out here. It's it's again, it's like a way of life. Yeah, people come out and they go, oh, you want to go to Cheetah? You know, you want to go to Cheetahs? You want to go here? You want to go there? You go, and and you just do it, you know. You, 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 there's a bunch. Anybody in Atlanta wants to go to Follies? Have at it. Is that that Follies. old one? The one that's been around for ages? What strip club is that? The one that's like the oldest Don't strip club in America? Claremont Lounge. Yeah. yeah. That's the one with some legendary old um, uh, dancer there. Anyway, so it works on the level that first of all you know hooters is a thing but then what would ha- what would it be like conceptually if there was a hooters where it was populated only by old women and obviously we all know what happens when you get old sam everything starts to droop and sag your bean your bean bag comes down to your knees you get super long fucking ears and obviously with women their boobs do start to go south you know so droopers is a pretty funny concept in my opinion not bad Right, I'm all right with that. Then you scroll down. Reality star what? in the making costume. What's wrong with that? Uh, because it's meant to look like a pregnant Kylie Jenner. They really struggle to explain why this yeah. is bad. Because they said, although it might seem topical, this costume, which is intended to look like a reportedly pregnant Kylie Jenner, also has body shaming implications. Like, how does it? I mean, it just looks like a reality star. Right, so is that yeah, a mask no. or is that just what the woman looks like? And then they, I got to be honest, there's there's a couple on here where it's like they were really struggling. Like they had a Stranger Things uh, costume, and this is meant to be uh, Eleven, I think. Um, and 
people just got upset about it because they said that's a bit why are you sexualizing a child it's like that's not a child though so so people got upset about that the person in it isn't yeah. a child is it that's the point yeah so you know um then the snake charmer costume <laughs> classic no, but this is a really good one, Sam, because you know what's happening there? You see the big fake sponge hand? Yeah. So his hand is in the yeah, snake. so you can push face. him out. That's banging. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should replace, you know, when people wear those fucking emus? Yeah, yeah. That would be got banging. fake legs oh, over the side. Like, one of those, like. The David Brent, mate. But when I come fucking... to the major, mate, in January, I'll rock <laughs> up in that. <laughs> <laughs> Love that with you, What's mate? not funny about that? <laughs> and they say it appropriates Middle Eastern culture. I'll grow up. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I've been to these countries. I've never seen yeah, the snake yeah, charm of it. No one wants to. You know, I, I saw one in India. But he was doing it for money. Yeah. He did, and he certainly didn't dress as well as that. <laughs> I would have been giving him more money. He had a hat as big as that one. Looks like Mojo look, Jojo's mate. brain. <laughs> Everything about this is banging, mate. Look at the shoes. <laughs> it, oh, the I'm, shoes. I hope they've given, oh, they have given a link to it. Like, fuck, I. <laughs> I'll get that one in. Should we get two of these in or what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, fucking like... hell, calm down. Uh, it's just fucking very scantily clad. Females, oh, oh. like, look, it was all right. Hey, whoa, 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 banned, yeah. of course. Mega banned. Mega banned. It, that wasn't a link to a snake charmer cosplay. You've lied. Hey, well, anyway, um, because you, you've heard the expression, you know, when <laughs> when someone's about to blow their beans and the, the toes start going and they call it the jester's shoe. <laughs> That's fucking perfect. Like I love that. Uh, sexy convict, uh, and they say uh, uh, the sexy convict costume uh, can be interpreted as trivializing the U.S. prison system. Uh, Why? <laughs> all right. What does that even I, mean? I, I don't even know what that means. So, <laughs> what um, reinforces harmful misconceptions about mental illness? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the restrained convict. That's oh, the one right. below. Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah that's what, the Hannibal Lecter myth. Yeah, right. they got the yeah fucking... but that is yeah, that isn't that a Hannibal Lecter costume though. Yeah, pretty much like the thing the thing to remember there is it's called the restrained convict costume, so they don't get sued by the guy who wrote Silence of the yeah. Lambs. It's a Hannibal Lecter costume. That's why it's got the anti cannibal mouth strap on, right? So you can't get bitten off like and I don't want to break it to anyone, but Hannibal Lecter, like any harmful misconception you have about him, is good because he was <laughs> yeah, properly mentally ill. Motherfucker eats Pro- people. Then I don't know what this was. Like he goes, you shouldn't make fun of a homeless person on the street. Yeah, all right. So you probably shouldn't dress like a hobo nightmare. That what? That's what I. I just thought it was like an evil clown or something. Why is it a hobo nightmare? Like, it just looks like so, a clown, mate. Look, you could tell. Then, then look, dressing up in this gorilla costume would be innocuous, but if you call it Harambe, oh it's insulting. Why? Because to Harambe. Yeah, yeah. Who is on it? A gorilla <laughs> is fine. A gorilla is still fine, but if you call it Harambe, it would be problematic. They don't explain That's why. That's not bad. We should wear those. Get a couple of those. What, the gorilla one? Yeah, the gorilla ones. If those are okay. What, what would we use that for? I don't know, we'll just random props for the show. <laughs> we'd start to run out of ideas. Thought we'd spice it up with a couple of gorilla costumes. Uh, maybe. So there you go. So uh, the 16 reasons why Halloween sucks now. So. Shame. There you go. Shame. Sads. So yeah, we we did a show, Sam. We did a show. Uh, how, we've done. Did we do the two hours? How long have we been? Uh, a lot of time. We have been going for two hours and fifteen minutes. There you go. We we did it. 
we we almost got to three two five as well, where we would have been compelled. Oh no, because we've already done were... those, mate. Seventy five yeah. is a new ball line. Is it, is it? Sorry, my bad, my bad. No free, no free t-shirts for you, fam. We need to get those subs up. Yeah. Guess I've actually got a stream to do that though. So, so I was going to talk about Donald Trump and this fish food thing, but we can probably save that till tomorrow. Yeah, why not? Because obviously Donald Trump is evil because he tried to kill some fish by not feeding them properly, despite mirroring, you know, what the uh, what the president uh, of of Japan is doing. So, pretty good. Anyway, so yeah, I think we wrap the show. Surely there. this of- is the end of Trump. Yeah, surely. Uh, good, good to have you back, Sam. Um, yeah, it's, fun, but... you know, it's been too long. You know, you know, we need to. The good, here's the good news, actually. I'll be, I'll be um, uh, off for a bit because I've got to go to the UK. All right, sound. Uh, so I'll be over in the UK in like four or five days. So uh, where are you staying? Ah, well, I, I'm going. I'm starting by going to the eSports Awards. Oh, so I don't wait, know if you yeah, want. Yeah, the G thing, guys. Yeah. I'll... Yeah. If you yeah, you want to come to that? Yeah, fuck, okay, let's do it. Yeah, we can smashed. stream the after party or something. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, come to that. But then I don't know. Maybe I'll go. To I'll get ready. Bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's black tie, so yeah. I've gotta gotta do that at some Sorry, point. Mate. You see, my, mate. Don't want to have my makeup done and my hair done in Korea. Fucking hell! Everyone was tweeting me like, I, "You're not as much of a fat mess as I imagined." <laughs> then it turns out when there was no makeup at PGL, I'm low. <laughs> I'm low. Yeah, you, you you looked all right actually when you were dressed up. Yeah, I lost some, some weight since the last time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Been hitting the heavy bag, slips. mate, taking it off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. You you leave your mum alone. You're gonna... <laughs> 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 You're gonna start fucking uh, esports MMA league, mate. That'll do some big pay per view numbers. Yeah, all right then. Yeah, I'm being for that. No problem, mate. Um, so yeah, all right. So yeah, I'll see you and we'll stream it. We'll have some fun. Yeah, good. All right, but anyway, be around tomorrow. We'll probably do another show. Uh, but we got by the numbers in about three and a half hours. Yeah. Is that right? No, four and a half hours. Uh, Not three and a half hours, four, correct, Mundo. Yeah, got it. Right, yeah, good. Uh, so in about three and a half hours, me, Thorin, and Sam will be back to uh, uh, drop some CS knowledge on you. Um, so until then. Uh, look after yourselves. If you don't tune in for Counter Strike stuff, we'll be back tomorrow with another Richard Lewis show. So, yeah, thanks to everybody who subbed, donated, and all that stuff. Uh, we'll catch you later. Peace.